McConnell, please stay and make some noise for the visiting team. Welcome to the field, the Cowboys Broncos. has done something that not many defensive players were able to do during his football playing days at St. Thomas More, the Rams, and UBC. It caught him. Dino Campomo passed away earlier today. Our condolences go out to Dino's family and friends. 
Please join the Rams family in recognizing a moment of silence for our fallen family member. Thank you. For those of you who never saw him play, please direct your attention to Jumbotron, and here's a sample of this greatness. Oh, Canada. 
evening, football fans. Welcome to BCFC TV, powered by Treeland Remax. As we get set for more BCFC action, here from Langley, British Columbia, the township is the Langley Ramps. Four and three, winners of three in a row. We'll take on the winless Kamloops Broncos here tonight, who come in at 0-7. On a rainy Saturday night here from Langley, it's Jake Elliott, Justin Morris sit with you once again. As Justin, we turn our attention from the Buchanan Bowl earlier out in North Vancouver. Eagles over the Royals, by the way, to our attention here in Langley. Ramps, winners of three in a row, playing some very good football. You want to touch on that Buchanan Bowl quickly? Well, well, the weather could only hold out for so long, Jake. Yes. I'm uh, looking out here at the rain falling down at McLeod Athletic Park this evening. And, of course, you were outside calling the game uh, on a little, like, partition. Were you in well, the stands? No, I, I, I was you, in the stands. You I were didn't just get among up the fans. The, yes, uh, the noisemakers, if you will. <laughs> I, I refused to get up on the stanchion. I did not trust it. didn't look like it was uh, up to par or up to code, I suppose, and wasn't willing to, to risk my 300-pound frame up on that stanchion. So. Fair enough. But that was the situation where if it was going to start raining, you were going to have to pack it in and that's, call it a day. That's right. But it just sprinkled a little bit. It is starting to come down here pretty good in Langley now, however. is I think ever since I mentioned how it's always great weather here in Langley for Rams <laughs> games, uh, it's rained the last two contests. So... We'll see. Uh, well, let's get back it to it It smells great, though. It's one of those summer rains out there. But, yes, a great football game this afternoon and uh, the Buchanan Bowl near and dear to myself as a Hansworth grad. Played in it 18 years ago. Have been doing the announcements for it for the last four. But uh, a nice little appetizer for the main course this evening. There you go. And it's the Langley Rams who should be feasting on a Kamloops Broncos team that has been not very good so far this year. Well, Langley coming off uh, maybe their most impressive victory of the season, 27-3, to the final in that one, in a game that Maximilian Joseph goes off for 226 yards on the ground. Yes, you heard it correctly, 226 yards rushing for Max Joseph to go along with three touchdowns, and Langley probably playing their best football of the season. You think back early into the year now, Justin, in those losses that really Langley just kind of shot themselves in the foot. That let Lack it get of away. discipline. Yeah, discipline and blowing big leads and all the rest of it. Playing their best football here when it matters most just a few weeks to go in the season. They'll have Vancouver Island next week, and they'll finish off the season against Kamloops. So... Langley looking pretty good at 4-3 and three to punch their ticket to the playoffs. And with a win here tonight over the Broncos can get into a three-way tie for second place. As, uh, scores from earlier today in BCFC action. The Okanagan Sun up at the Apple Bowl. Take down VI 47-31 and it looked to be like a beautiful football game. The marquee matchup of the week as the Sun take over sole possession of first place. And those Valley Huskers get their fifth win of the season. How about the Valley Huskers this year in 2018? Got to be the story of the year, at least in the BC division. Absolutely. 23-19 over West Shore. The Rebels, who are now in some jeopardy. Broncos will wear their whites. They will kick off the Rams in their home blues with the white helmets. As is Jake Kelly, Justin Moore set with you here on BCFC TV as we get set for some junior football action as they're just running down the clock. Let's get another 20 seconds to go in here. But Jake, not sure two, why they can't just stop it and put the time up. But anyways. Two weeks ago, what were we talking about heading into the last home game? That this was a team that needed to get their running game going. Their, you know, receiving, their passing game was going pretty yeah. well, but running not doing it for them a whole heck of a lot. In that game, Max Joseph blew up both on the kick return and as a rusher had some help as well Joe Carter had a good game too but good to see them keep it going there on the road this past week yeah they even actually improved in that department as we're set to go here from McLeod tee it up kick it off let's play some football as Couture drives a leg into it and on the return it's Eglinetto picking his way through some tacklers and gets out past the 35 yard line is Man, oh, man, is it ever nice to see the actual yard markers down <laughs> on the field the last couple of games I've called at the high school level have uh, been a bit of a challenge in that regard. Nice to get back to some Canadian rules, football, yard markers down on the field as well. And the lights shining bright down here on McLeod Athletic Park. Thanks for joining us, by the way. And as always, folks, let's get it out of the way early. 
If you want to be interactive during the broadcast, you can do so via Twitter. You can find myself at PXP, the number four sports. PXP for sports, and Justin, you are? Justin Morris with one R or one S. There you go. First down and 10. Duncan Little on the handoff. Up the middle will gain a couple. And a little wrestling match out on the edge there. And some talking after that first down play. Still give him close to three on that carry. And it'll be second and seven here for Langley. As we are underway on a Saturday night, this will round out week eight action here in the BCFC. Good to see the Rams go for it on the run right off the bat. It took them a little while to look for the running game two weeks ago when we were last year in McLeod. You got Liam Stewart split wide to this near side, but it's Max Joseph on the power sweep to the right, and he's got the first down as he's knocked out of bounds over on that far Rams sideline. And sorry, just almost surprising play call there. You know, uh, it's a second and seven. Second and seven. Thought you might go for the pass because you need the long yards, but uh, well, Max been, Joseph comes up with it. They've been so effective on the ground the last couple of weeks. Have Langley Rams why get away from what's working for you? And, and of course, if I'm thinking pass, then the Broncos are probably thinking that too. Nope, yeah, it's the old A team double step <laughs> ahead. If you <laughs> think I'm going to take that hamburger, I'm going to take this one. And <laughs> night, night. First and ten here for Langley. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, I know. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Duncan Little under center. High formation in the backfield. Motion comes to the line. And Little, the handoff. Look out. Almost lost it. Regained. And Joseph will scoot ahead here as they'll pick up another three yards on first down as I just had my pen explode on me. But another run here for Langley as they go with three straight along the ground as you'll watch the replay here brought to you. One of the boys downstairs from 10 Feet Sports and Entertainment. And the one thing... Just couldn't get that lead block that he needed. That Max needed to be careful about in the last game, certainly two weeks ago, was the way he holds the football out away from his body. Uh, it has been ripe a couple times for uh, turnovers, fumbles, and whatnot, but uh, able to hang on to it there despite a big crowd of bodies looking to spring it loose from him. We'll call it about second and five. Look like movement up front. Joseph will run it. He's wrapped up immediately. And uh, the question will become, was it a false start? Was it offside? And that will... Broncos pointing towards Langley, saying they were the team that was off here. And this could be an easy punt situation if that is the case. Hoping we don't see as many flags this evening as we oh did this goodness. afternoon, Jake. Yeah, that was uh, you know, a high school game that they played 12-minute quarters in, Justin, and what, that was close to a three-hour football game. Yeah, I'm, uh, maybe longer even. It <laughs> felt, was, felt longer yeah, to me. Was, there's not a lot of flow, <laughs> let's say, that in the Buchanan Bowl. The first quarter alone felt like it yeah. lasted an entire half. And you were there for the JV game. I as was well, as so well, long, yeah. Long day for you. This is my third game of the day. But wonderful football at every level. So a five-yard penalty there going against the Broncos, actually, which brings up second and inches here for Langley as they move across the 55-yard line into Kamloops territory for the first time this evening. And you got to think they're going to run now. In fact, it might even be uh, the yeah. quarterback himself. Yeah, Little will have a look over his shoulder, come up under center, tuck his head down and plow ahead. And he's got first down yardage, plus a couple of more yards as he's close down to the 50-yard line. And I guess... Probably should briefly touch on what is going to be the elephant in the room right now, Justin Morris said, and that is the departure of Coach Matt Snoop Blocker, who has left the Langley Rams due to personal health reasons and not getting a whole lot more information than that, that he's no longer with the team uh, due to some health reasons. And it'll be Howie Zaran who will take over play calling duties, the offensive coordinator, and assume the role right now down the stretch as the interim guy to finish out the season. From the just shy of the 50-yard line here inside the right hash mark. Little under center. Play action. Deep drop over the middle. He comes with it. And put it right in the hands of Liam Stewart. You flat out drop that one. And it'll bring up second and ten. Just bounced right off the hands. I'm sure he can throw it any better. That was a perfectly placed pass. A nice sell on the play action there from Little as well. We were talking about the rain, though. It doesn't look like it's raining too much at the moment, but that might make things a little more slippery than we might suspect. Yeah, because, like you said, that is a perfectly placed well, pass. We're in the cozy confines of what I consider to be the best 
vantage point to call a football game in the league here from Langley. Got the covered glass, the nice bright lights up in the press box here. Now we get to look across at the big Jumbotron for replays as well as Little out of the shotgun here on second and ten. Over the middle, overshoots his man, bobbled around and intercepted. Broncos come up with the turnover. Yes, it's Michael, Michael Barrick. Baird. Who almost dropped it, but after a couple of bobbles, secures the football and... Looked like Little got knocked right as he let the pass go. We'll, well see if we can catch us another look at that here. Well, oh, that was, that was a clean release, and I think he just either overshot or undershot one of his two receivers that were in the vicinity and dropped it right into, in between them, into the hands of Michael Bear. Physicality came right after it was gone then. But regardless, so now Broncos come up with a big INT. Man couldn't. We'll start at quarterback here for Kamloops, looking for their first win of the season. As usually you talk about Kamloops and Valley always kind of playing for the basement bowl. Those two teams would battle and try and get wins against each other. Valley with their fifth win on the season already. But it's Kamloops at the basement of the standings here looking for a win number one. And really, under Coach Brad, Yamoka could be in tough here to try and find that this season as maybe better parity in the BCFC than we've ever seen, at least in the last couple of decades. Really... The five, top five out of the six teams here in this conference could easily go on to win the Cullen Cup. Seems like it's anybody's game from week to week. Four-yard gain on first down. Except for the Broncos, of course. As they'll reset the offense here. Maybe an audible coming from Van Conet. As he stands back at the 50-yard line, starts the motion with a little kick of the heel, takes the shotgun snap. He'll deliver the football, and it is caught. And good enough for a six-yard gain and a first down delivered to Darian Pritchard. And nice throw and catch there from the Broncos to move the sticks. And this doesn't look like a winless team. They're going to say that's incomplete. Oh, really? Justin said, excuse me. The, As the, the kicking must have hit the turf, out now. Yeah, out comes the kick team. As Couture will lead him out here, and man, I'd like to see a replay of that one more time. That looked like a catch. I guess when you uh, are having a winless season, it's one of those things, you know, the, the breaks just never seem to go your way. Yeah, Another rough one for the Broncos right there. And standing at his 40 to kick this one, Couture. Standing back to return at his own 20. I believe that's Liam Stewart down there. And lots of time to get this one away in a great spiraling, angling kick. It's actually Aglanetto and has to retreat all the way to the 10 to pick that one up and then gets wrapped up and buried at the 13. What a punt there from Couture. And a big tackle from Josh Isaac for the Broncos there to wrap Aglanetto up and make sure that he doesn't have very far to go. Man, you know when you get that spiral. Watch the ball flight here off the leg of Couture. A thing of beauty. You cannot oh. punt it any better than that. That's about a 60-yarder in the air. That was beautiful. And that is beautiful technique there from Bryce Couture. Could watch those all night, of course, I'm sure. And after my own heart, a former punter back in this uh -huh. league once upon a time. The Kamloops offense, of course, hoping that they don't have to kick it away too often today. But little uh, under center will pitch this time. Ball brought in. Good little spin move. And that will go ahead for about three, maybe four. As that was Vincent Mohammed on the carry. And I believe that's his Mohammed first game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. As I think he was injured in training camp and has not seen any action but uh, owner president of the Langley Rams Dana Matheson tipping me off keep an eye on number 32 in blue here tonight they were ultra pumped to get him back in the lineup and what it might do we were talking a couple of weeks ago Justin about Langley maybe needing a secondary kind of big star receiver well I think they want to put Max Joseph back out into the wideout position and we'll see if Mohammed can kind of fill that gap for Joseph to allow the Rams to do that, to take some pressure away from Javon Katoy and those double teams that he's going to receive every time that the ball is snapped because they just don't really have another big threat option on the other side of the field. But if they can move Joseph out into the edge and get Mohammed going out of the backfield, that's going to make them so much more balanced uh, offensive attack. It's going to make them really hard to defend. And Katoy is second in the league in touchdowns right now having himself one heck of an offensive season, but hasn't had a ton of success here on home field.
because he's just been double covered, if not triple covered. They have been draping guys all over him. I actually do not see him out on the field now as Little will throw on the out to Aglianetto. Got to make some bodies miss here, and he's not going to be able to do it. Let's check the spot, however. And I think he's going to be about a half a yard short here as quick decision here from Zoran to bring out the punt team as you don't want to mess around that deep in your own territory, even on a third and short. And they will kick away as Mat Matthias Bueno. Too early. His, yeah, absolutely. Too early to be making rests like that. Eight minutes to go here in this first quarter. Scoreless between the Rams and the Broncos. As if you're joining us late, two finals coming in from the BC FC already. Okanagan Sun over Vancouver Island, 47-31, the final from the Apple Bowl. Excuse me, and Valley over West Shore from Exhibition Park. 23-19, and a take contest as the Huskers pick up their fifth win. As Bueno puts the right leg into it, and this one a bit of a wobbler. Look out, it bounces at the 43. Picked up, and the Broncos will start the return here. Official had to dodge out of the way. As that's never a good idea. Dave Zaklovsky, rather, on the return. Zaklovsky on the return, indeed. And Didn't get sure to go what, very far. Not sure what the official was doing in the vicinity of the football right there. That's a good way to get hurt. And it's just really just bad positioning by the official there to be in the mix on a kick return like that. But good field position here for the Broncos as they'll take the ball at the 46-yard line in Langley territory from the right hash mark out of the shotgun. Neither offense really able to find much rhythm so far in the early stages of this one. Van Canet has got that heel kick as he starts the motion and a jet sweep across the formation here. And just buried on the sideline, close to a horse collar tackle, but Darian Pritchard just forced out of bounds on the carry. That was a good job there. I'm not sure who actually made the tackle there, Justin. Maybe we'll get a replay on it, but watch. He kind of grabs out and then comes close to the horse collar tackle, realizes it, takes the hand off, and then gets over the top to drive him into the turf. And nice job there to avoid that penalty and still limit him to just a two-yard gain as we won't get a replay, unfortunately. Pritchard trying to stiff arm him as well to keep that distance. Good job staying with the man the whole way. Need to watch that Pittsburgh Steelers tight end. As here comes pressure up the middle from the Rams, and that's a big-time sack. A ton of bodies there. To Three guys busting through. Wrap up Van Canet. Who do we have on the scene there? Sky King for certain, number 55. 33 in the mix there. O'Coley, who has really been a leader for this Rams defense. And while we're at it here, i got to get a quick shout out. Let me, let me get this in before we move too far along. As punt team back out, let's see if Couture can replicate what he did on his first punt of the evening. Almost artful, the kick. <laughs> yes, first I mean, it really was a thing of beauty. <laughs> Wobbly snap this time, look out. Oh, somehow he sidesteps two Rams and gets the kick away. And no yards will be the call. That one hit the turf. It'll just be the five-yard variety. But how about it from Bryce Couture to sidestep the oncoming punt block team and Fla still get the kick away? Flag on the play, though, after Aglanetto took the ball in. Look at that move right there. That is impressive. And then the composure to still get a decent kick away. And I think it'll be no yards, but it hit the turf. So it should just be five yards here. But I'm going to get a shout out in there quickly. Glendon Cross, Justin Morissette, uh, who I have to assume <laughs> is a relative of some sort of Cameron Cross, tuned in from Newfoundland. Oh, my here, goodness. Here tonight. So a we late one back east. And we are literally going from coast to coast tonight. You betcha. And welcome aboard BCFC TV powered by Treeland Remax. And speaking of Max, this is Maximilian Joseph trying to bounce it to the outside. Got ripped down from behind, but not after picking up 11 yards on that first down carry. As that was very close to breaking away for big yards. You mentioned they're going to try and get Max Joseph back into the receiving game earlier there, Jake. It's also just, you know, nice to have three different options that you can hand off to in the backfield. Three guys who are demonstrating tonight that they can get it done no matter which way you want to go. 
Joseph, What's the running game? You got Carter and you got Mohammed. It's Joseph back there now. Here comes the blitz in the Broncos. It's a handoff from Little to Joseph following his blockers, but no hole really opened up there for Max Joseph. And pretty good stop on defense by that Bronco defensive line. And perhaps expected at this point, given that he has been the favored target thus far. At least as far as handoffs go, Max Joseph has had a number of touches so far this evening. Done pretty well with most of them. And obviously he's got the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield too and from the wide receiver position. So a real threat in all sorts of spots on the field if they want to utilize him that way. And he might be a receiver right here as I would assume that Duncan Little's going to look to the sky. Everything loaded up to this near side. Little, a big drop. They set up the screen here. Joseph trying to get away from a tackle. Flag comes in. I think it's going to be a late hit on the quarterback. As the screen play, Joseph one tackler away from busting a big one. But a late hit on Duncan Little. And this should be an automatic first down here for Langley. Tack on 15. Well, he was feeling all kinds of pressure there from not one but two members of the Broncos defense. Well, just watch the drop here from Little. It's about a nine-stepper as they tried to set up that screen. And really had the defense bounce. Good patience from the young quarterback to wait and wait and wait as long as he can. But Joseph just ain't able to make that first man miss. Otherwise, he was going to be off to the races. Well, that screenplay, the pass basically only got back to the line of scrimmage from how far back he had to scramble. Ball comes out to the 54-yard line, though, and it's a first and 10 here for Langley. As they're on the move, looking for their first points of the game, working from the right hash mark as Little will go under center eye formation in the backfield. Little to throw on first down. It's an out pattern here to Aglianetto. Broncos swarming to the ball, a stiff arm attempt and driven out of bounds. After about a three yard gain as they've targeted number 80 a few times early in this contest as well. Looked like a gain of four, but he might have got pushed back for a loss there at the end. We'll see where they spot it. But Aglanetto having a pretty fine start to the evening as well, given that we haven't seen Javon Katoy. And of course, we got the big hoss, his older brother Alex, the former nose tackle standout, just off to our left here. Is about as big of a contrast as you could find in brothers. You got big <laughs> Alex here who played nose tackle for the Rams for a number of seasons, and then you got the scat speedster out on the wide receiver for a younger brother, Nick. I don't know what happened. The penalty of some he, kind has gone He stunt his growth as he was good, just kept pounding on him, and he just never grew up. He probably just ran away from me. He couldn't catch him. Rams find themselves in a... Very long yardage situation, though, here off yeah. of a flag of some kind. Big penalty backs them all the way up. They got to get to the 47 of Kamloops for a first down here. And all sorts of distance. Here comes the blitz. Rams pick it up. Time in the pocket for Little. Now he's flushed up, and he's swallowed up. As in on the tackle was Darby Kwan to sack Duncan Little, and punt team comes out here for Langley. And Let's give these Broncos a little bit of credit here early in this football game, Justin. They've come to play here tonight in Langley, and they got an interception already, a couple of three and outs on defense, and not looking like they're too overmatched here for an 0-7 football team. Well, there's two ways you can close out the season if you're a winless football team at this point, right? You can obviously fold like a cheap poker table, or you can come out fired up week after week and try to get better in the win column and it certainly looks like they have tried to do the latter here tonight well, I don't know another great punt but takes a Rams bounce down to the 41 yard line and up the Broncos sideline some hard collisions out there looks like an injured Bronco as well Forced out at about the 47 limited return for Saklovsky injured men down for both sides right now must have been a hard collision there. As That's Kyle Clarot for the yikes. Rams. You know, I want to see that if you're a Rams fan for the star defensive back. And he's having some trouble trying to get back to his feet here. Kind of clutching his Achilles tendon area. And, man, you don't want to see that. And he has been a vitally important defensive player for a Rams defense that has looked very good of late. And training staff working on him here as Clarot stands or sits back up. But... Clearly looking like he's in some discomfort down there. Is the Broncos player being attended to as well as blocked from our 
view as I think he's going to be helped to his feet now as Clarot back up and standing and then if it was in fact his Achilles he would not be walking like that so that's good to see there for number 21. I for the Broncos it's number 11 Josh Isaac. Thinking maybe a rolled ankle for each guy. Both and of them walk back to their respective sidelines on their own accord so always encouraging. I think we'll see both back in the game before too long. be first and 10 here for Kamloops from their own 47 and a half yard line right hash mark. Shotgun once again for Van Connet and it's a handoff up the middle and just gets gobbled up after a couple of yards there as the Rams defense pretty stiff there as they stopped it up quickly. Gain of two looked like for Trent Price, who tried to run that one right up the middle. Looks like the Broncos want to go quickly. It's Cam Cross hustling off the field to the Rams sideline as they, something the Broncos like to do, and I'm sure the Rams are prepared for it, is it looks like they like to start that motion in the line of scrimmage and then stop trying to get the Rams to jump offside. But we haven't seen that yet. Sky King had the tackle on that last rush, and he is uh, just a, a big boy right up the middle. Van Canet. Looks to throw over the middle and hurried and behind, low, and incomplete. And took a shot at the end of that play as well as out comes the punt team once again for Kamloops. And Vancanet feeling some pressure once again. Number 55, Sky King. He had a sack or was in on that sack on the last Broncos possession and able to penetrate the pocket once again right there. Two minutes to go in this opening, 15 minutes. And Couture standing at his 35-yard line as Aglianetto stands back around his 20, expecting another deep ball here. We'll see if Langley wants to bring pressure again. As they got home that last attempt, but it was a nice little sidestep shuffle there from Couture to able to get the kick away. Better snap this time. Pressure again, and just got that one away. He's going to draw a flag. As Aglinetto, I think, realizing that, doesn't want to take an extra hit for no reason. I think the Broncos are going to keep the football here as Langley came ever so close to making contact on that football. And if they get any kind of a piece of it, no flag comes in. But I think Couture was able to get away cleanly. And that will be roughing the kicker, 15-yard penalty, and the Broncos will keep the drive alive. Well, it was a 15-yard penalty that basically spelled the end of the last... Langley possession, and here we get a 15-yard penalty. I, like, I honestly don't know how they didn't make contact with that football. There was three guys in the vicinity, and nobody was able to get a hand on it. It's just a 10-yard penalty, but it is an automatic first down. And ball goes into Langley territory at the 49-yard line now. As that's probably the one thing Langley needs to steer clear of here tonight is penalty trouble. On paper, they should beat this Kamloops team, but if they're going to give them free yardage like that, anybody can beat anybody in this league on any given night. A Sky King into the backfield disrupting things. He's having himself a game. My goodness, we're calling his name almost every single play here, and it brings up a second and ten. He is the reason right there that Van Canet had to just throw the garbage away and avoid another sack. Took a little while, but what was a bit of a peckish crowd here to start the festivities tonight, starting to fill up in the grandstand here at McLeod Athletic Park for Langley Rams football. And we thank you for joining us on BCFC TV as well. Here's Van Canet, pushed out of the pocket, throws, and again, Low and behind is your intended receiver and incomplete. Very close. He was looking for number 88, Ian Finstad there. And Finstad slid to try and come up with it. but no, That's a hard ball to try and catch it yeah. from Finstad. Going to the ground, reaching behind you. And Ben Kinnett's just got to do a better job of delivering the football because Finstad was open there. And if he can put it in a good spot... I don't know if that's me or you, Justin, or whether that's getting picked up or not. I almost feel like it's cell phone interference. And if it is, we apologize if that's coming through on your end of things. 
But here comes the punt team. It's high snap. Couture again. Bit of a side spiral this time. And being able to step up on it is Aglinetto. Trying to bounce it to the outside. Oh, he's tackled down from behind. And just to hang on to the football, however, gets it out to the 26-yard line. And that's where Langley will set up shop with 42 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Curious that it's been Aglinetto on the kick return every single time. That has been a strength of Max Joseph in the past. Certainly been a role that he's been used in multiple times this season and, in fact, had a couple touchdowns on kick returns. Yeah, well, I, you open yourself up to some pretty big hits on the kick return game, and maybe it's a situation without Katoy. They want to protect Max Joseph a little bit, and I don't know what the situation is with Javon Katoy. Maybe they're thinking they're up against an 0-7 Kamloops team. They've ridden that big receiver all year long. Maybe give him a week off to recover a little bit as we head down the stretch here into the playoffs, but such an important game here for Langley. I don't know if you can really afford to do that if that is, in fact, the decision that was made. I don't think either of us were expecting him to not be in the lineup tonight, so we'll see if we can get an update. There's a pass in, a catch, completion over the middle there to J.J. Jackson, one of my favorites. It's a fun name to say, certainly. And it's not just the letter J, it's actually J-A-Y-J-A-Y, -A -Y, <laughs> which makes it even better. So J.J. Jackson with a, and you have to say J.J. Jackson. Of you can't course, just say of Jackson. course. Oh, absolutely. 13-yard gain. It's really funny how as an announcement, we'll pick it up after this play, Little on the swing. Good cap there at the point of attack. It's, Moha or it's Max Joseph stiff-arming a couple of bodies and picks up close to 20. So I want to say it's kind of funny as an announcer, and I'm sure you've encountered this over your years as well. Some guys, you just say the last name, and there's other guys where you say their full name every time that you call it. Wow, how are you going to pass up the alliteration of J.J. No, Jackson? No, I'm just, he's just a, a prime I, example I, of it, but I, there's I, just certain guys you say just their last name, and then certain guys that you have to say their full oh, name. Oh, absolutely. I, I fully understand that. Well, at the end of 15 minutes of play, I'm not sure anyone expected this score line here, Justin Morris said. No. 0-0 zero, zero between the Rams and the Broncos here in this final game of week number eight. I mentioned at about the midway point of the quarter there that neither offense has gotten into a groove at any point. We haven't really seen any sustained drives. This might be the most that this <laughs> Langley offenses seem to have it together thus far, and they're still inside their own zone and uh, a have a long way to go. have hurt their cause. Uh, both defenses playing pretty well here early in this one. As the Rams break the huddle, it's a first and ten. Max Joseph, though, he is something to watch. Athlete. A man of that stature, the way he is able to just shake off tackles. We'll see if he does it again here. Uh, the thing I mentioned before, he's a former lacrosse player as well, and you could tell... He's just one of those guys that just excels at whatever sport he wants to play. Here's a catch over the middle. It's J.J. Jackson, and he'll step out of bounds inside Bronco territory. Looks like he's going to pick up the one or the first down. He will indeed, and he knew right where the marker was. And they'll spot it down at the 54-yard line. Thought to himself, well, I got it. May as well go no further. Yeah. Avoid injury, just run it out of bounds. Why not? He was close, but he got just enough to move the sticks. <clears throat> First by a nose, we'll call it. The ball right on that township flag there at the 54-yard line of Kamloops. Little under center quickly. Barks out the signals. Now here comes the pitch to Joseph. He's got blockers out on the edge. Carter trying to give him one. Joseph on his feet. Cuts it back up inside. He'll pick up three, close to four. As again, I think Langley just... Clearly a block away from springing a big one here against Kamloops. They just can't quite seem to get that final block at the point of attack to spring Joseph quite yet, but I just, you feel like it's coming. Pretty good game, though. Still four yards on that one. And again, it's almost like you have to go low on Max Joseph. Just wrap up his feet, give him nowhere to go. Otherwise, he's going to have no trouble shaking you off. Feeding him the rock early and often here tonight as Little will go out of the shotgun here on second and six. Three-man front here from the Broncos. They'll shift the protection over to this right side. Little. Broncos show blitz. They'll come off the edge, get protection. Little delivers. Pass was low. Did he hang on to that one? No. They'll say incomplete. 
as James Spencer couldn't squeeze the pigskin. I don't know about that, though. Let's take a look at the well, replay. That one bounced if we can. around in his feet. He thought he had it, but. Uh, he and went. We'll get a replay here on BCFC TV. Let's he went rolling as well. It's uh, no. Uh, the ball just out of our view good effort. There. Good effort, but clearly incomplete. And with Tyus Bueno, we'll kick away here for Langley. As they put two returners back here for the Broncos. And good high kick from Bueno, standing at his 15. We'll take the kick and immediately tackle down. No flags on the play either. Good downfield coverage there on the punt team. As that was Colton DeJong on the special teams plate. Going to give those special teamers a little bit of love from now, time to time, Justin. And that was an excellent open field tackle there from DeJong. Absolutely. He gave Gabe Soklowski absolutely nowhere to go. By the time he had the ball, he was tackled. The ball is on the 12-yard line here of Kamloops as we still search for our first points of the game here tonight. As rain still misting down here at McLeod Athletic Park out of the shotgun. It'll be Van Canet. And pass is dropped incomplete. And... Broncos have a long way to go if they want to be the team today. Yeah, there's been a to put up some points first. A couple of bad balls there from Van Canet. That one, <clears throat> excuse me, I think was a catchable football and his receiver just not really helping him out. It brings up a second and ten. It looks like they'll go press coverage out on the edge here. They got six in the box. A little rollout. Look out. Pressure. Oh, he avoids it, and that's got to be intentional grounding. That's got to be inside the tackle boxes and not a receiver in the vicinity. And, yes, the flag does come flying. It comes very late, but it is the correct call. And this will be loss of yardage, loss of down, I believe. It's a grounding. It's a problem with uh, an ungrounded wire. I don't know if anyone can hear it on the broadcast, but uh, we're Let getting a little buzz in our ears. Let me know if you can hear it. <laughs> A pretty apparent buzz in our ear. And it'll be third down here from Kamloops. We just want to make sure it's not coming out. If it's not coming through, I'm not going to worry about it. But yeah. if it is, then it's something we so have if it to is, rectify. If it is ungrounded electricity, it might be something for us to worry about as well, Jake. <laughs> well, we are trying. We are trying. We got the rubber sole shoes on. I think we're going to be okay. Well, it'll be another punting situation here for Kamloops. As is it Joseph back to receive this kick this time, Justin Morissette? In fact, it is as he stands around the 52-yard line. First time today, if and I'm not mistaken. It is, good sure. Now he's just going to take an eight. He really dragged that out, though. Yeah, they normally do. And I don't really know why guys do that. I mean, if it's late in the game and you're trying to kill some time off the clock, okay. But tons of time to go. Just take the knee. And I guess if you can draw a late hit call, then okay. But you're just kind of setting yourself yeah. up for failure there. It's not like uh, you're managing the clock with 12-16 remaining in the second quarter. No. So they'll give up the points. It's a safety. And now Langley will just take possession of the football at the 35-yard line in their own zone. Who had that as the first score of the day, a safety? Yeah, well, get to Vegas <laughs> if it was you. <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> so from the left hash mark here from the 35, Little and company back out there for Langley, trying to get the offense going here a little bit as they lead this game 2 to nothing now. And here's Little on the handoff to Joseph, a little counter. Look how it took a... Hard hit right near the line of scrimmage and was rather lucky to hang on to the football. Joseph just got popped as he got back to the line. Nowhere to go. Spun right around. We'll give him a yard. It'll be second and nine. Back on his feet into the huddle. No worse for wear. 
Eleven and a half minutes to go. Clock running here in the second quarter. As they'll go three receivers to the near side. One to the high, two in the backfield. Little out of the shotgun. Takes a low snap. Get protection. Looks deep. He's got a man wide open. Ooh. And somehow not able to run underneath that one was Jacob Stebbins. Uh, overthrown by maybe two yards. I think Stebbins kind of slowed his route down. I think he's got to just keep going. And I think he underestimated the arm of Duncan Little. And I think Little was just trying to let him run underneath that ball. And Stebbins kind of let up a little bit. And it just fell harmlessly incomplete. And that's really the first time here tonight we've seen Langley take a shot down field. Oh, excuse me. Oh. We do have a quarterback change here for Langley. And we have a punt for the Rams as well. And good tackle by Spencer right at the 50-yard line. Tristan Yancey. Taking the, snap, taking the snaps here. I'm just going to take your word for it on that one, Justin. A couple lot. I was nervous to take a stab at it myself, but well, you're you're always you're always good at that sort of thing. <laughs> I like you being the, I don't guinea, know. the guinea pig. There were a couple names during the Buchanan Bowl today. I was just happy to say the number and move on. The Broncos take back over here, trailing two to nothing. And fire on the run. Good catch gain of seven. Completion goes to Dunvelt. Actually give him seven. And again, the Broncos want to go quickly here. As they're in the Rams territory, they'll wave him ahead. Here's the handoff. And the Rams made contact early. Couldn't bring him down. And spinning ahead. Going to be about a half a yard short here. But I think the Broncos will surely go for this one. At this point in the field, at this point in the game, it seems... Like more of a calculated risk than some of the other third down situations we've seen earlier. About a half a yard short for the Broncos. Ball spotted down on the 50 and a half yard line of Langley as they break the huddle. And this is a big test for this defensive line for the Rams to see if they can stand tall. And Kanat trying to get there and he does as he sashays along the line of scrimmage there until he found a hole to dive ahead. And it'll be a first down for the Broncos. Sky King just burst right through the line, but somebody had already made their way past him with the ball. Under 10 minutes we go here in the second quarter. 2-0 Langley. Broncos on the move. Trying to orchestrate a scoring drive here as they work just inside the Rams 50-yard line. It's a handoff. Good cut. And ahead for about five on that carry there from Procrinic. It will just find a hole to burst through on the right side. Procrinic. I think it's actually Procrinic. You're probably right. If I get my Croatian down. We got an injured man here on the field. We do, and it actually it might be like Procrinic. Pro Pokernich. And I've got a flag down on the field as well that's going to go against the Rams. And this will be more free yardage here for Kamloops. I'll march this ball down to about the 31, it looks like. With the attention to the injured Bronco right now. Ball spotted right now at the 18. Oh my goodness, that's like a 30 yard penalty right there. Oh, and it's a late hit coming in at the end of that play right there. The end of the play was 45. 25 yard penalty. Lowered, lowered the hat and really an unnecessary hit at the end of that play. And I don't, honestly, I don't mind. If you're going to do something like that, yeah, you should get taxed uh, a significant amount of yardage. 
Jeez, I think they called it targeting. And this is junior football, and you got to protect the players at some point. And that's just the needless, senseless hit there, and just a lack of discipline, a lack of focus, and really just unnecessary. I, and yeah, that's. I mean, you tack a 25-yard penalty on a kid, he's probably going to think about doing that a second time, or probably think better than doing that a second time after putting his team in a very vulnerable position taking a penalty like that. And neither team, of course, has been able to get much going offensively. I'm sure internal frustrations that how the game is going so far are starting to bubble up on both sides, but you hate to see something like that. No need for that at I'm all. I'm not exactly sure who it was on that hit. I think Damron was in there. I think Denoya might have been in the mix as well, but I don't want to single anybody out. As they try and get the injured Bronco back onto his feet here, but they're taking a lot of time, and it is Prokrenic who is the injured player, and I'm going to wonder after taking a hit like that whether that might be his evening over is because you start to think maybe concussion after watching that hit. Even just the way there. Kind of tended to him right now. Mm -hmm. He's back on his feet. Seems like you, know, you hate to speculate on injury, no, Jake. No, I know. But it certainly does do, seem I like do it concussion often, protocols should be followed yeah. right now. Better safe than sorry, right? Absolutely. If he can return to the game by before the end of the night, we'd love to see him back. But uh, yeah, he's walking off under his own power, and you can kind of see he's shaking out the cobwebs here a little bit. And it's, you know, with all that we know about concussions now, some are on set immediately. Some take days to show up. Some are really severe right away. Some are very mild, and it's really hard to kind of diagnose immediately. First and 10 here for the Broncos out of the shotgun. Yeah, it's a handoff up the middle. That'll go for a couple as the Rams stack that up. And I'll bring up a second and about seven here as the Rams knocking on the door for their first points of the evening. As Krinich has been laid out on a table on the sideline here in front of us. Keep my eye on him, of course. I see he receives treatment from the training staff. Watch the replay once again. As Van Conet breaks the huddle. We'll bring three receivers to the near wide side, two to the high. One in the backfield. As the Rams load it up on the line here, they're showing six. Here comes the motion. It's man to man. And Van Canet will lob into the end zone. They got a man with separation, but it falls incomplete just outside the boundary. As they went for the end zone on second and seven, but come up empty. And out comes the kick team here. Receiver was in prime position to make that touchdown yeah, happen. Better, but, better uh, thrown ball. That's a touchdown. But Yamoka wants the field goal now. Throw went to the outside. That was Tim Slipa who was looking to haul in that one. Out comes Bryce Couture and company. So I'll look to take the lead here with a made field goal. be a 23-yard attempt just inside the right hash. Brace Couture. Snap and hold is good. Kick is also good. Flank comes in as well. And Kick was good, but it's uh, no, <laughs> contingent on who the flag was against. Well, listen, if it's offside on Langley, it's a five-yard penalty, which would not give Kamloops the first down, so it'll be interesting call here. Do the Broncos take points off the board and go on third and short, or do they just say, you know what, we'll take the points and decline the penalty? There's the answer. And that's what they do. Penalty declined, may as well. Why look a gift horse in the mouth, as it were? You got three points on the board. Points have been hard to come by for either side. Never take points off the board, Justin Morris said. That's the golden rule in football, really. Never take points off the board. And for a team that's really struggled to score, like you mentioned, just to give you a bit of a contrast, Langley, 4-3 and three on the season, 
They've scored 187 points. They've given up 124, where the 0-7 Camus Broncos have only scored 75 points all season long and have given up 251. Oh, goodness. So that right there spells the story of their season. Don't almost. take points off the board. It's the lesson learned. Yeah. As they continue to work on Prokrinich down underneath that tent, here on the Broncos sideline, as here comes the kick. And it's an angler. It's a short one. Back to receive and good hands there. Up this near side and knocked it out of bounds around the 43. On the return was Ferriero. Uh, one of the up men. So I'll say Ferrero. And Slangley with good field position here will take the ball at the 43 yard line. See uh, who will be the quarterback for this drive. Behind center for the Rams is it is indeed. So Yansu will go under center and he'll pitch it out to Joseph. Again, they look for that edge once again for number two. Better yardage this time for Joseph as he'll fall ahead for close to eight. I wonder if Duncan Little got roughed up earlier in this game and we might have missed it, Jake, because I didn't think his start to the game was bad at all. He certainly had some well-placed passes. We talked about one that just bounced off the hands well, of his I receiver. I mentioning that he took a hit near the end of a play on one of those drives, and you just wonder maybe if that was the case, or maybe they just want to get 13 into the lineup here and see what he can do against this Bronco team. Very short, stocky quarterback. Brianzi. And he'll hand off a flags come flying as Joseph met in the backfield. And stopped well short of a first down. Now let's check one, two, three flags out on the field here. And we'll see if it's against Langley or against Kamloops here. I think it might go against the Rams on a hold. No, it's actually against Kamloops. This should be an automatic first down here for Langley. You would think so. They only needed three. Here's the call. I think a situation there where somebody just lined up in the neutral zone, Justin. That's a free five yards for Langley. And for a winless Kamloops Broncos team, those are the type of penalties you could just not give up. At the same if time, if you're the Langley Rams, you certainly saw a slew of flags and penalties lead to the points that the Broncos have put on the board so far in this one. It doesn't, doesn't hurt to see it come back the other way. Here's a shotgun snap. Look over the middle. Look oh. out. That went into all sorts of traffic intended cool. for Aglanetto, and that should have been picked off. Just evaded the reach of Justin Haverkamp for the Broncos. He was in prime position to come up with an interception. Well, they go to the air on first down, and I mean, there's that that's much closer to being picked off than it is a completion. And now it's a second and 10, and maybe a little nerves for the young quarterback in there right now, and see what he can deliver here on second and 10 right from the midfield strike. Well, this becomes a big test for the Rams, doesn't it? They're now without their top receiver and their top They're quarterback. They're go deep and well overthrown once again. And that was not even close, so a couple of shaky balls there from Tristan Yentzu. And if we are pronouncing that anywhere near <laughs> wrong, please let us know. As we weren't prepared for 13 to be in the lineup, but if you know, let us know at PXB, the number four sports. Bueno now, we'll kick this one away. Decent kick here from Bueno. Look out, almost dropped, but it is secured and pushed back and out of bounds. Be careful over there on that sideline. Don't want to get too egregious, but good downfield coverage once again on that punt team for Langley. And Camus will start this drive pretty deep in their own zone again, but leading this football game 3-2. to two. And Good distance on that kick there from Bueno as well. He had a couple earlier that uh, you might call no bueno. 
but certainly seems you like might. he's finding his you form might. as this game goes along. I know, you, you try to avoid that one. I can never help myself. This looks like a hockey score on the board right now, though, Jake. It really does. Uh, five and a half minutes to go, and here's a first down throw, and multiple flags come flying again. I think Kamloops across the line of scrimmage a little too early, and they'll go backwards here five yards, but I've... Been over two on penalty calls here so far tonight, so let's see what they decide to call on this one. Flags were away at about the same time the ball left the hands of the QB, Van Kinnett, So They're going to say offside on Langley. Now, free five yards for the Broncos, and it's first and five. Charles Moye, defensive end, the player got called on the offside there, number 99. Van Conet takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, looks deep. He's got a man in behind coverage. It's underthrown, though, and trying to turn back to the football in time and get his head around was Murray, I believe, but just didn't turn in time as that ball well underthrown by Van Conet as his receiver there was two, three yards in behind coverage. And a better thrown football. That one's going for six. It looks like they're going to call it Rough in the passer, anyways, though, because Nathan Murray for the Rams never even looked really where the pass was coming. He was just. Well, he was trying to catch up. Absolutely. Right. Guy he was trying to catch up with just stopped and he ran right into him. Well, penalty trouble here for Langley in this opening half. That's a tough one, though. I don't know about that. There's Van Kennett to throw. Got a wide open man. Good for 10 as he dances across the field here and then wrapped up from behind and might have actually taken the first down away from himself trying to get extra yardage there as Dunveld had first down yardage then on his own accord came back inside the 10-yard area there and he's going to be a, a, yard yard and short. Half, a yard and a half short now on second and one. And I get he's, he's trying to make a play there, but... And it'll work out okay as they pick up the first down on second down. But got to be a little more aware of your surroundings there. And it's Trent Price who will pick up the first down on the run up the middle. Didn't go very far, but he didn't have very far to go either. Yeah, the Rams 51-yard line, Broncos. Leading by a single point as the clock ticking close down to four minutes here. As they'll reset the offense as they start the motion ahead. Van Conet will go up under center. Crouches down, takes the snap, hand it off, running near side. Protect that football, and when we're ahead for about four. Gain of four for Price once again. Is he's been running up the middle for the most part in this game, but this time swung out to the left side. Rams looking pretty good here in this opening half. I, mean, I know it's only 3-2, but they're moving the ball. And Rams keep taking penalties. They're going to keep the Broncos right in this football game. The, Bron the Broncos looking good, you mean? Yeah, excuse me. Br big play here. I don't know about a second and six. And now the Broncos are offside. And here comes pressure. And deep ball coming. And it's intercepted. And now Nathan Murray on the pick here. Now what do you do here if you're Langley? Because that's an offside on Kamloops, which would bring up a third down from about the 50-yard line. Or do you take the interception on the turnover, but you're going to start... Start on your own two. Yeah. It's not a... Maybe even start on your own one. I'm not sure exactly yeah, where like they're going to spot I know what you it. do if you're in the CFL. You Obviously, you take the turnover. And so it's... Oh, man. So it's offside on both teams. And Penalties cancel. They're just going to repeat yeah, second down. And second and six once again. So that, well, that yeah. takes that decision away. So much for having to make a big, tough choice there. Dilemma. Again, the negated crucial, crucial penalty there on the Rams will take away the turnover. 
They're going to get to the 41 of Langley for a first down here. Ball is on the 47. And here comes the snap. Out pattern, and it's high and incomplete. As Denoya had his man lined up for a hard hit there, but held up wisely as the ball sailed. On Van Canet, incomplete. Ian Finstad was the intended receiver there, and as he spun to try and take the ball in, it was caught a knee to the head. So, third down and six now for Kamloops. Just under three minutes to go in the half here as Joseph will stand back around his own five-yard line as Couture stands at his own 50 for this Bronco punt. Max Joseph right now standing about where they would have taken the ball if yep. that interception had counted. Well, let's see. If it gets into the end zone, I'm going to say Joseph is going to bring it out regardless here. I don't think he's given up a single. Here's the snap. Couture all day to kick it. Oh. Shanked it right oh. off the side of his foot. They didn't want to kick it anywhere near Joseph. And Couture got a little too cute with it and put it right off. The, that was about a seven-yard punt. Well, we were talking about his earlier kicks being works of art. That wasn't even... I wouldn't put that on my fridge if a kid drew it. What? How far was that punt? <laughs> about three yards? We're not getting a reply. No, we're not. We're not. It was short. I can tell you that. Ball now on the 44 of Langley. Well, it was on the 40... It was a four-yard punt. It was on the 47 of Langley. <laughs> and they take possession on their own 44. So not a bad turn of events in the end for the Rams out of all that. on a swing here to Joseph. Good block out on the edge. Joseph trying to cut it back and picks up about two and a half maybe. Closer to three maybe. Uh, still get out across to the 47. I was thinking three, but they were calling it two up here in the booth. I figured I'd split the difference. Why not? Well, it's about two and a half. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think you're right. That is three. Okay. It's an important drive here for Second Langley to try and, and get something going here offensively. They just haven't. Is it Little back in a quarterback here as well? It is. It is. And he'll look to throw. He's got a completion. He's got a first down. He's got a good move. And out oh, there is Vic Belanger, the former Rams quarterback. His first catch of the day. He had himself one heck of a day two weeks ago. First down, Joe lets you know that'll move the sticks for the Rams. And clock stopped at 2.13 as they'll spot the football, wind it, and the clock starts to run here in a first and 10 for Little. He'll take the shotgun snap, three-step drop, loads up the gun, fires, and nobody home out on the near sideline. As I think maybe a little confusion on the route pattern there. As Little was looking a little perplexed that there was nobody in the vicinity where he threw the football. And he's in conversation with Belanger as Belanger comes back to the huddle as well. But I think they might not have liked what they saw from those pass attempts from Yansu on the last possession there. Yeah. And if Little is shaken up at all, he's going to try and make the most of it here and hope to... Well, I think they've looked more effective with number 10 at the pivot. I would agree. And he'll try and orchestrate a... Late drive here in this opening half. It's second and ten right now. So he's got two in the backfield. And he'll take a low snap there. Little over the middle. A low pass. Oh. Had an open man. But under threw him just a touch as it falls incomplete. And the Rams will have to give the ball back to the Broncos here with 159 to go in the half. He was looking for Nick Aglanetto there but couldn't connect with them. I was going to say, all he needs to do is engineer a quality drive here, and he's got two minutes uh, left before he's able to take a bit of a breather at the half, but unfortunately that will do it for the offensive possession here as the Rams look to kick it away. Might be a nice little area to maybe run a fake here. It is 10 yards to go. But they, yes, they will run a oh. fake. Justin Morissette, it's bueno. Trying to get to the marker, and I'm not sure he got there. He'll come up short. He did Might, not. Yeah, I think he's about three yards shy. He was kind of random. I don't think he realized how far he needed to go. Good play call, though, for Jake Elliott. Well, just kind of felt like it was right in that area where, why not? 
And I think Bueno, I mean, it, he's got to cut that upfield and try and dive ahead for a couple more yards there. I think he just went out of bounds thinking he had it, and he was short. Like you said, though, not a bad gamble at all because as the Broncos take possession here, they're in a worse position than the Rams were when they got the ball last. That's true. And so why not take that gamble? 38-yard line, 152 to go. Look like offside, no flags coming. Deep ball down the sideline will go out of bounds. Uh, good coverage out on the edge there once again by Nathan Murray, who's been targeted a few times here by the Broncos, but he's done fairly well except for that one big pass interference call. Fees Dinaveld, the intended receiver on that one. I figured I'd take a stab at that name. Dinaveld. Number 81. Dinaveld. Yeah. All right. I don't know. That's I'll what go. I'm thinking. I'll go with it. Here comes a throw on second down, or will it? No. Rams get home into the backfield. And sacked back there. As Partap Sandu comes up with a sack, and that is a quick, and I mean quick, two and out there for the Broncos. Yeah, the Took about 18 seconds. Langley's going to get the football back here. It's almost like the Rams' last possession never ended. We'll see where they come up with the ball, though, as it's Max Joseph once again well, deep. Definitely time to work with here for the Rams if they can get a half-decent return out of Joseph. And you got to think also the Broncos probably a little too deep in their own end to try to fake it this time. They're going to go with Dewan Belt. All right. Yeah. PXP for sports, if you know. As we both were... Out in North Vancouver at the Buchanan Bowl earlier, and more or less scrambled from North. <laughs> Traffic was absolutely <laughs> oh my goodness as well all the way through, and uh, both scrambled to McLeod Athletic Park in time for kickoff here, but didn't have a whole lot of time to go chat with coaches or rosters and typical pronunciation process. Yes, so we apologize for any mispronunciations here tonight. I think we actually have an inf injured official down on the field here on the Broncos sideline, Justin. They're looking at the lower leg. Oh, yeah. Maybe just a calf cramp. I don't know what's going on. Down. We do have a senior official in our presence here tonight up in the front. He's, he's yeah. left the press, uh, press box here. And he's hopping in the elevator. He he's going to go suit up, I think. He might need to go grab his uh, striped shirt and, and get into this football game here for the second half. I don't think this, uh, this referee can continue. I think it looks like he can barely stand. He might be taking work off on Monday. Anybody see what happened to him? <laughs> no. Uh, he is going to limp off to the sideline here, and I think that particular official, his night is over. He's take a seat, take down a the seat on the bench in front of us. <laughs> see, I, see if we can get him on camera yeah, here. This is uh, I think it's something in behind his knee, maybe. I don't know if he's... Uh, Hey, if, if you're going to bring hamburgers up to the press box, you bring one for everybody, not just your son, Mrs. Agnetto. Thank you. A partially blocked punt as Joseph on the return. High steps a man and then gets shoved out of bounds at the 52-yard line. And the Rams will have 123 to go here to halftime and a half a football field to go for pay dirt. I got so caught up in the drama around that referee, I forgot well, I got, we were waiting on a kick there. I got caught up in the drama of uh, a hamburger being <laughs> delivered to my left here and uh, <laughs> took my focus right away from the football game. That's all it takes. Ah. Well, we were talking about the Buchanan Bowl. Did you, did you catch a look at that Buchanan burger that they were right. serving up? No. no. It was a cheeseburger with a hot dog on top oh of it. Goodness. And then just smothered stop. with just, grilled onions. Just stop it. Stop. The official burger of the 2018 yeah. Buchanan Bowl. Here's Little on the rollout. Loads up. Fires a deep ball to the wide side. Is it caught out there? I believe it is. And out of bounds as well, which will stop the clock. Beautiful hands to Teglinetto. No hamburger in that hand of Nick Teglinetto as he secures the pigskin.
First and 10, Langley. Watch the replay one more time here on BCFC TV, powered by Treeland Remax. No, we're going to go to live action. Little on the rollout this time. Comes near side. Look Ooh. out. That one slipped through the hands of Belanger. Victor Belanger. And lucky to fall incomplete. That had the makings of the old tip drill there. There were sharks circling. Both Caden Cook and number 36, Casey Powell. Trying to get a piece of that one, but instead it falls harmlessly to the ground. So it'll bring up second and 10. 70 seconds left here. That's a minute and 10 for you Canadian fans. <laughs> for the Rams to try and get some more offense on the board. I don't think the... I'm uh, just kidding. But I know. I don't think the Broncos have played with a lead a whole heck of a lot so far this no, season. No, I imagine they probably have not. And a one-point lead has got to be pretty rare, at least when we're talking about single-digit scores like this. I don't think uh, Rams sideline's got to be too pleased with this opening 34 minutes or 33 and change if you will and Broncos I'm not sure how they would feel about a 3-2 score at halftime you're like in if, the lead yeah, you probably feel good about that get to the locker room and you say listen we got a half a football game to play to get our first win of the season here and we're in the lead and this is a Langley offense that has been pretty potent missing a big weapon like we said in Javon Katoy he is tied for second in touchdowns in the league at the moment you know, we're not exactly sure whether Duncan Little is exactly right either. But he is in there right now for Langley, staring at a second and ten. So the Broncos have to feel pretty good about the fact that the only points that they've given up were ones that they willingly surrendered on yeah, a safety. Really? From the left, Hashberg. Man in motion. Little takes the shotgun snap. He'll drop three steps and fire. Completion. And nice play call and execution there. Liam Stewart will walk it out of bounds after a 15-yard game. It only took seven seconds off the clock as well. So not only do they move the yardsticks, they also stop the clock. Not yeah. a bad play at all. I almost feel like that play there for Langley that they just ran is there and open any time that they want to run that play. They've been successful at it. They just haven't really gone back to it a whole lot, but... That long cross across the field. Duncan Little's getting ample time in the pocket to distribute the football. So those long patterns that Langley is running are working against his Bronco defense. That time, coverage was good. And ball goes incomplete, intended for Spencer. And there is a flag on the play. Quick look at the in-town scoreboard. Mm. The Toronto Raptors beat the Portland Trailblazers by a score of 122 to 104 at Rogers Arena here this evening, the annual game in Vancouver. That's preseason it is. basketball. It You're is. updating oh, preseason I, basketball. I right love now. it when the Raptors play at Rogers Arena. We get one game a year here. We the West. <laughs> the NBA remembers Vancouver exists, but one night a year. And Toronto with a victorious I, effort. Tell you what. I was a big Grizzlies fan back in the mid-90s. I'm excited uh, to see that documentary coming out. Yeah, Big Country. Yeah, Finding Big Country. It'll be part of the Vancouver International Film Festival. They used to call him Sleep Country back in his days here <laughs> in Vancouver. <laughs> Here's the snap to Little. Fakes the handout. Trying to step up in the pocket. A little shovel feed. It's Carter, I believe. He'll get knocked down. Let's check the spot here, though. Justin Moore said it was a first and five. It's going to be close. Yeah. Certainly looks like it's within range. I might have to bring the sticks out on the field. Well, they're going to run it here and say it's second and one, I believe. 49 seconds on the clock. It'll start on the whistle. It does now. Little crouches down. Quarterback sneak. And he's got first down yardage as they'll stop the clock on the first down spot. With 44 seconds to go, Langley with their best drive of the football game here, looking for their first offensive points of the contest. And that'll move the chains as they're spun it down around the 17, it looks like. And you can really see Langley how they're missing Javon Katoy right now without their star wide receiver in there. They've had to find different ways to get the ball down the football field here. As Little under center, here's Carter stepping up. Little looking to the end zone. A little separation. Touchdown, Rams. A perfect pass. Perfectly placed right into the hands. Liam Stewart on the reception. 
of William Stewart. On the back corner of the end zone, and you're right, Justin Morris said you cannot throw it any better than Duncan Little did on this play right here. Watch, stepped up off the front foot, put the perfect amount of arc on it, only where Stewart could catch it. And good concentration there by the Langley wideout to bring that one in for the major. I had a feeling, Jake, before we saw that snap that Duncan Little was just one throw away from a touchdown. If only I'd said it, I'd look like a genius instead. Doesn't I'm count. Sorry. No, doesn't, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. Count. Uh, now I think a decision here for the Rams. They called timeout because I think they changed their mind and weren't going to have enough time to get the proper personnel out onto the field with a five-point lead right now. Makes sense to go for two and try and make it a seven-point game rather than kick the single and go for six, I would think. The book must say go for two here, Justin. Oh, yes. The book. I wish I book? had it. I no. don't have the book. I need no. to get the book. Yeah. They don't share it with people like no, us. No, I don't, I don't know who's got the book, who printed the book, where you get how, Can you buy the book? I don't know. It's uh, just, uh, I think there's only a set number of copies, and it's handed down mm. from generation to generation. Okay. Well, if anyone uh, has a copy they're willing to part with, I'd love to get the book. And the book, of course, that we're talking about is what you do in regards to either going for one or going for two, depending on what the score is. And whether you go for it on third down as well. well here goes <laughs> Little for a two-point conversion. Empty backfield on the rollout into the end zone. It goes. Did he catch that football? He did. What a reception, Vic Belanger, for the two-point conversion. <laughs> From his back. Incredible stuff. Oh, that is concentration personified right there from Victor Belanger. He had Liam Stewart hovering right on top of him, and that was the first man who called it a good catch. You can see the arms go up on a flick from Stewart right there. What a reception, and just like that, it goes from a 3-2 Bronco lead. A late drive here from Langley, and now up a converted touchdown here at 10-3 is we got more of a football score, finally. We do. We do. And suddenly the Rams can go back to the room at the half and not feel too bad about the way this half went for them. Well, first things first here. You want to get downfield and cover this kick. Uh, it looks like a different kicker coming in. Jaden Sheelan will handle kickoff duties here. Got the bright yellow underwear underneath that Rams jersey. Pick myself up a new Rams hat here tonight, Justin. Very nice. No start or not. So Sheelan puts the leg into it. Angles it near sideline. Brought in at the 15-yard line. And swarmed under there at the 23. Good coverage downfield once again. Langley's been impressive in that regard. Getting downfield and covering kicks. Special teams have been good. That was Vincent Mohammed with the tackle as well. Nearly popped his own helmet off as he took the man down. Let's take another look at it right here. Sean Wakeling. Mohammed now. Running the Wraps special him up. Special teamers. So now, Broncos have 22 seconds to go and about 75 yards to go. And you have to think that Van Canada is going to be looking deep on every opportunity with the clock uh, being one of I don't think so. Is. I'm thinking victory formation here and just take a knee and get to halftime here for Kamloops. I don't think they want to risk anything silly with this amount of time left in the half. And Langley, I think, pretty content to let time expire as well. So one more knee here before halftime. As winners earlier today, Okanagan Sun, 47-31 over Vancouver Island as they take over sole possession of first place. And the Valley Huskers pick up their first fifth win of the season as they take down the West Shore Rebels 23-19, the final from Exhibition Park. There is the final play of half number one. Ramps will take a slam. Seven-point lead into the locker room here at halftime. And we will take you to break here on BCFC TV, powered by Treeland Remax. It's Jake Elliott, Justin Morris, sent with you from McLeod Athletic Park for BCFC football. Here from Langley. Make yourself a Dagwood sandwich. We'll talk to you before you know it. <laughs> yes. Do that. See you in 50. <laughs>
going to sugarcoat it. We had a bit of a rough start to the season. Mom! So it was time to update Dylan's gear. Kahunaverse.com had it all, including equipment and our team's custom clothing. Looking playoff ready, Dylan. From prospect to pro, Kahunaverse.com.
All right, football fans, welcome back to McLeod Athletic Park here on BCFC TV, powered by Treeland Remax. Jake Elliott, Justin Morris set with you as we get set for second half action here between the Langley Rams and the Kamloops Broncos. Low scoring opening 30 minutes. Sheelan, kick it off. Let's play some football. It's an onside kick. It's picked up by Langley. And all the way down to the 35-yard line. That is a perfect onside kick from Sheelan. As Langley dials it up in the second half and come up with the football beautifully down there from this special teams unit. Honestly, Jake, we may have seen more excitement just now in the first four <laughs> seconds of the second half. I don't mean to chuckle, but it's, it's <laughs> funny because it's true. Than we did in the entirety of the opening 30 minutes here tonight. I do have the stats just passed my way from the opening half. We will touch on that here momentarily, but after a beautifully executed onside kick from Sheelan Langley in business here from the 35-yard line. And it's Duncan Little in the pocket once again. It is. He'll hand off to Joe Carter, trying to find a hole. Oh, nice move there. Stiff arm, my man. Turn the corner up 30. Spin it back inside. Flank comes in after a seven-yard gain from Joe Carter as he gets his name called for the first time here tonight. Had some great moves in the early going as he shook off not one, not two. Well, we'll catch another look at it here on the replay. Joe Carter, there's the first man he eludes. The a second. Get off me, <laughs> stiff arm. And a third, but it's in trying to shake off that third that he is eventually hauled down. Penalty on the play, though. Going to... It's unfortunate. It says it'll come back to the 45-yard line after the holding call. First down once again. 10-yard penalty. First and 20 at the 45. Clock running. 40 seconds into this third quarter. And long way to go now for Langley as they move the sticks to the near side. It's a first and 20. Little shotgun. And looks, flags come flying over the middle, wide open, pass is caught, but I think this is going to be offside on the Rams as Joseph makes the catch. But let's check the laundry. Langley might have been across the line of scrimmage a little bit early. And if that is the case, that's going to... Another beautifully thrown ball there from Little. And Langley will march backwards once again, so... After that promising onside kick recovery, a couple of costly penalties here in Langley. And speaking of penalties, why don't we start right there, Justin Morissette. Langley in that opening half, eight penalties for 80 yards. Kamloops, six for 40. So half the penalty yardage there for Kamloops. Then Langley incurred in that opening half as the ball all the way back to the 50 now. It's a first and 25 here two, for the Rams. Two penalties so far for them in the first minute here, and that's cost them another 15 yards. There's a snap. Little will roll. He'll throw. Joseph will drop as the pass and a late bump there. And another penalty flag. And this, let's see who this one flies against here. As there was some... Action after that play away from where the football went right on the line of scrimmage. And I think this one is going to go against Langley as well as they're going backwards here in a big way on this drive. Well, that was two linemen getting tangled up with each other. I don't know. I don't know how you pick one out of that little exactly. fracas, but let's see. Going to say unnecessary roughness against the Rams. My goodness, and I don't know if the replacement official has got into this game or not, or whether the injured official from the opening half is able to continue. My, my goodness. goodness. They would, <laughs> still, well, it's second down now. So you surrender the, the down. Look at this here, Jeff. We saw a third and 53 in the Buchanan Bowl earlier today. Actually, it was a third and 58. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. Second down and 40 right here for Langley. My goodness. Not too many plays in the playbook for a second and 40. Carter is not going to get anywhere near that. And Langley will just play a little field position here to recap the first half stats. You mentioned those penalty stats there. 
13 first downs for the Rams. Five, just five for Kamloops. Rushing yards, 58-27 Langley. Passing yards, really where the huge discrepancy is, although it's only a touchdown lead here for Langley. 125-16 to in the air for Langley. And a loss of 27 yards for Kamloops. Just one yard. And total yards, 182-16, to but two turnovers for the Rams as well. Bueno, low line drive kick. Caught on the fly, but no flags come in as Langley will take to the field on defense. Here comes the Broncos offense for the first time here in the second half. But you would look at these stats and go, there's no way Kamloops is in this football game. 182 yards to 16 total yards from scrimmage. <laughs> 16 yards. But yet they're just down a single score here. Incredible. Eight carries for 40 yards for Max Joseph. 125 for Duncan Little as here comes Bronco offense and that one's slipping through the hands incomplete. That one intended for Tim Solpia. First time they've targeted him. Duncan Little, 11 for 17, 125 yards, a pick, and a touchdown. And with no Javon Katoy, they've really had to spread the football around offensively here for Langley. And I would say Liam Stewart's probably been the most targeted receiver here for Langley tonight. I feel like Aglanetto's had his name said the most, but of course he's been playing kick return quite a bit today as well. Pressure, Cross trying to bring down the quarterback, and he does. Can't cross. They'll like that one back in Newfoundland. As they bring him back down to the 29-yard line, a huge sack there for Langley. Cam Cross just going beast mode on the celebration after that sack as well. Tore the jersey open like Superman. <laughs> Watch it here. Trying to get this crowd fired up, but I'm sure they didn't have a ton to feel excited about in that first half. A little Ray Lewis flavor to it for Cammy Cross. And now it's second, and check it, third and forever here for Kamloops, and they will have to kick. And Couture blocked again. Langley gained a piece of that one as it rolls out of bounds. And Langley will have good field position here. To start this drive. <laughs> As we continue to play with their equipment here, trying to get rid of the buzz in our ear. Hopefully it's not coming through on your side of things here on BCFC TV, powered by Treeland Remax. Four minutes gone here in the third quarter. Is it Yensu back in there? No, it's still Little. As he'll throw on first down. Aglinetto the catch, spins it to the outside. Gets wrapped up uh, close to a gain of nine. And very manageable second down yardage here for Langley as they're back into Bronco territory, leading 10 to three. It'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Now they're gonna call it a full two. Still wouldn't surprise me, though. We've seen Duncan Little show no reluctance to call his own number in these sorts of situations. If it's a QB sneak right here. He's done very well at the quarterback sneak, uh, has Duncan Little, all season long, really. is. Some quarterbacks are just much more effective at it than others, and Duncan Little very good at the quarterback sneak. I think he drew a Bronco offside there as Carter, shedding tacklers, gets across the 40 down to the 39. And I'm sure they'll decline that offside penalty after that run from Joe Carter Jr. Assuming it is against the Broncos, you can't tell the way the flags have gone against the Rams so far in this second half. I think that was just a good hard count there from Little that drew the left end off there for Kamloops. Watch it again, top of your screen. That penalty is declined. That will be a first down here for Langley. I hope they're gonna show the replay, but they did not. Downstairs in the booth for the 10 Feet Sports Entertainment production crew. Ball just inside the 40 yard line. Left hash mark here for Little and the Rams, leading by a touchdown. As they'll put Carter deep into the backfield by formation. Four receivers in, too high, too near. 
And Little goes up and under center as a 3-4 shown here for the Broncos. Play action. Little looks deep into the end zone. He's got Liam Stewart in behind. Goes up oh, for the oh, catch oh, and oh, makes oh. another beauty. What a remarkable grab from Liam Stewart. Where did this kick come from? Two highlight reel catches for Liam Stewart. And the Rams are down to the five-yard line. Maybe a little underthrown from Little, but what an adjustment to the football here from Liam Stewart. Watch him come back to it and goes up for it as well, and he can't cover it much better than that either. That is just a beautiful catch. A leaping effort from Stewart to keep it out of the hands of the defender. Now, if I'm Langley and Howie's around, just pound the rock here with Joe Kerr. Here comes pressure. It's Carter up the middle. Runs over a man down to the two. Stopped just shy of the end zone. I was thinking that, that might be the best catch we'll see all day, but of course Stewart's touchdown catch from earlier might have been even nicer. Don't forget the two-point conversion catch from Victor Belanger as well, which was a highlight reel. And now, ball down to the two-yard line here. Langley trying to make it a two-score game. Jake, it took them to about one minute left in the second quarter, but it does feel now like they got like the rhythm going a little bit here offensively. Yeah. Rams offense is clicking into gear. Joseph will come to this near side along with Liam Stewart. Joseph in the slot. Carter's the deep man. He's got those yellow kicks down in that eye formation. Here's Little with the pitch to Carter. Looking for a block on the edge. He'll cut it back. Looking for the goal line. Reaching. No signal. His teammates have their arms up. We'll see what the ref Referees says. Referees come in and looking, looking, looking. Still no signal. And they're going to talk it over here. All three of them together. And out of the pack. Touchdown, Ramps. It took a while, but I think it's the right call. Let's watch the replay here on BCFC TV. Watch the reach right there from Carter, and that breaks the plane. And that's a touchdown for the Rams, who make it 16-3 to with the extra point to come. And his teammates were extremely confident that that was a good touchdown uh, almost if, immediately. I don't know if Carter really needed to cut that ball back up in. As Sheelan puts it through. It's 17-3 now. The lead up to 14 with 7.43 here to go in the third quarter. Hard to believe when you look at the score now that for a good long while this was a 3-2 football game. My goodness. Tell you what, looking down at these two teams here and their uniforms, Langley with the solid blue and the white numbers, white socks, blue pants, Kamloops, orange socks, blue pants, white jerseys, solid weights with very simple but very effective football uniforms for both these teams, Justin. And of course, Jake. Love it. The most important thing for us up here. Easy. Very Sorry. legible numbers. <laughs> it, it brings me back right here to McLeod Athletic Park in 2016 for the Women's World Football Championship. I don't know if you were called. I Mexico. White jerseys, silver numbers on the back. <laughs> Virtually impossible. I, I think I did have to work a Mexico game during that tournament. <laughs> I don't know whose bright idea that was. They must have got a discount on those things. Fond memories of that event, though. Yeah, that was oh, a yeah. ton of fun, yeah. especially the Canada-USA <laughs> final. Yeah, well, there were some fond memories and then maybe some not-so-fond <laughs> memories. As we, got a, we got a little lesson from some, some females uh, throughout that week about what women's football is, is all about. Well, we don't have women's football no. organized out here. In fact, there were some girls playing in the high no, school don't games say, earlier. Don't say girls. Well, don't well, we learn that they're, lesson. When they're, when they're 15, 16 years <laughs> old, Jake, I think it's safe to call them girls. I would call the boys playing in that game okay, boys as well. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Here's a return. high school ball. Here's the return from the 15. I was actually surprised, though, at how many girls well, were in those games. I tell Both you what, guys. the very first game I, I saw or called, they ran a, like a Statue of Liberty flea flicker, and I was, you know, essentially I was a little bit shocked that they would run a play like that in women's football, and I got bombarded. Like, how dare I say that the women could not run a Statue of Liberty flea flicker? And it was... Well, it, you just it, don't it, expect to see that from anybody. No, and it was, <laughs> it was pretty much on... 
from that point on. But uh, I digress. It was a fun week. And, and we'll uh, get back to the game at hand. Yes, indeed, we will. 7.25 clock running here, third quarter. And a pass is complete. Close to first down yardage, and an extra effort, I think, will get there for the Broncos. After coming up, catching that ball about two yards short, and then a little second effort there will gain him enough. Give him a gain of 11 to move the sticks. Hoping I finally dealt with that yeah, well, wire issue there. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers Fresh crossed. set of downs here for the Broncos. Of course, they didn't have a whole heck of a lot of first downs in that first Throw Krenich back in the game here for the Broncos. Did not finish the first half as it looked like he took a high hit to the helmet area. Apparently not, Justin. And Krenich comes back in. But a big run there, and a, but also a flag on that play. And let's see if this with a couple of flags on the field. One at the 45-yard line, one out near the 53 of Langley. And I think the Broncos are going to go backwards here. Because usually you don't spring a big run like that without a little holding, and that is the call against Kamloops. Just good to see him back in the game regardless. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, that was a very serious hit late in the second quarter. He was laid out on the medical table under the tent in front of us on the Kamloops sideline for a good long while. I did not think we were going to see him return to action here this evening. So they will back the ball up all the way to the 28-yard line. they got to get to the 48 for a first down. So call it first and 20 here for Kamloops. Out of the shotgun, it's another handoff to Prokrinich. And he'll pick up close to 8. It'll be a second and 12. Uh, it's Van Conet. Been in there, quarterback all evening long here for Kamloops. And he's had some bright spots. He's also had you know, a couple of wobbly balls, some, some bad decisions, taking a couple of sacks as well. But I wouldn't put any of this on the quarterback play here, really. I, I think his teammates need to pick him up here a little bit and make some plays for him. Another flag comes in. Deep ball this time. Nobody home. And I think that was a free play, and I think Van Conet knew it, and that's why he just chucked it downfield, but I think this is going to be offside on Langley. Well, there was nobody even close to where he was throwing that ball. Overthrown by it will not be a first at, at least 12 yards. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's just <laughs> a situation where you knew it was a free play and just throw it as far as you can and hope. So they'll tack on five yards. They're still second down. Call it second and seven now. But much more manageable here for the Broncos, trying to keep this drive going with the clock moving under six minutes. We'll break the huddle. Three receivers will come to this near side. Two will go to the high short side of the field. Single set back in behind. And now moves up in protection. They'll look his way. Pressure coming from Langley. There's... An incomplete as Sky King into the backfield once again, and there was all sorts of things happening on that play. It looked like a hold, looked like a lead hit on the quarterback, and an incomplete pass as well. And I think the Broncos are going to have to kick away here, as Langley will most likely decline that holding call. Well, think about how many times we said Sky King's name in that first half, Jake. That seemed to dissipate a little bit towards the end of the second quarter. And that pressure. Maybe some adjustments there from Yamoka oh. to help double double block Sky King, if you will. But the pressure that Van Kinnett was facing seemingly on every snap seemed to alleviate a little bit in the back half of that second quarter. It's back on here in the third, however. Rams do, in fact, decline the penalty. As Maximilian Joseph stands back at his 35-yard line. As Couture has had a good night punting. Here comes the block party, though. Flags come flying. And Joseph will step up here as it'll hit the turf and skip out of bounds. Going to come against Langley. Maybe a neutral zone infraction here. And if it is, in fact, that, it'll be another five yards here for Cam, which will not give them the first down, but maybe give them a decision to make here on whether to go for it on third down now. Down 14 points here late in the third quarter. I 
I mean, if you turn it over on downs here, the, the game's essentially over. Yeah. But, uh, honestly, though, Justin, at 0-7. You may as well make some risky play calls. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. I, I guess you got to stick to your, your values and your principles here a little bit. but Looks like they are going to kick this one away. Yeah, I mean, sooner or later, do you not have to, like, believe in your kids a little bit and, and give them a chance to win a football game? Looks like they'll – actually, that penalty is probably going to be against Kamloops. I think Langley just declined it, and they'll take the field position here at the 41. So another one of those decisions – it becomes Just, a moot point, and yeah. our discussion becomes pretty much irrelevant. As Langley will break the huddle here, leading by 14, as we have five minutes to go in this third quarter. Ball on the 41-yard line on the right hash mark here for Duncan Little, who came out of this football game for a few series, but has come back in and played well since returning. He'll throw on first down. He's got a man open at Joseph, and he has tackled Amelia. That looked like a horse collar, and it is called by the sideline judge correctly so. And that'll be a 15-yarder. Back on his feet. Joseph gets up a little bit wobbly after taking that high tackle. I think he's going to be okay. Hunched over in the huddle, but I'm sure he'll shake it off. Just maybe a bit of a stinger there on Joseph. He's looking to the Rams' sideline, but I think he's going to stay in there. And without Javon Katoy here tonight, they've really leaned heavily on number two in blue. As they should probably. Yeah. He's their most dangerous player outside of Katoy, and he certainly looked like that tonight. Where am I, man? Ryan McDonald's old number two. All, all the way up to the 51 of Kamloops after that horse collar tackle penalty. Little sends him in motion, takes the shotgun snap, three-step drop, looks over the middle, fires through hands, and down to the oh. turf it goes. A couple oh. of Broncos had their mitts on it, but it hits the turf incomplete at second and ten. Most notably, number 28, Sam Schlitz, pounded the turf as he thought he'd come up with that one. Add that name to the all-name team, Sam Schlitz. I like it. The gentleman who you see punched the turf on the replay there. Because he was just perilously close to coming up with an interception. Rams dodge a bullet there, and it's second and ten now. Got to get to the 41 for a first down. And you would think, given they need ten yards, that they're going to look to pass once again. Broncos showing some pressure here as they put four on the line. Little will drop back to throw. He's got time. He's got an open Joe Carter. Takes in the pass. Good block out there. Springs Carter free. Hurdles a man at the 35. And stays on his feet down to the 31-yard line. Nice play there and run after the catch from Joe Carter Jr. Oh, that might be the play of the night right there. That hurdle was spectacular. Uh, that was something to behold there for Joe Carter. Watch it again here on BCFC TV. Powered by Treeline Remax. Watch it right here from Carter. Well, Edwin Moses up and over. Oh, 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 look at that. We saw that actually earlier in the Buchanan Bowl. Keelan White tried. That is illegal in high school football. Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, and that penalty was called for intentionally hurtling. I don't know what the, the actual penalty call is. Well, it was unsuccessful in the attempt, too. Yeah, no, flipped it flipped over. It, it was did not end well. Another flag comes in as Carter gets his number called again. Look at the power here from Carter, refusing to go down as he storms ahead for about five. Well, it's rare you see high school players that have that kind of power as well. well. He's an athlete. But, he was, uh, uh, but you could see after that play why they've deemed that play illegal at the high school level because it's, it's a dangerous play. But Carter right there executed perfectly. Well-timed hurdle. As once the just the relentless effort there from Carter just refusing to go down. Continuing to try to drive his feet even though there's nowhere to go. Had to be wrapped up by multiple men. Felled him like a tree. Call is here. I believe it's offside on Kamloops, but Langley's actually going to go backwards here. Uh, I think it's going to be first and 15 on the ramp. No, they're going to go ahead with it. I, I am way off on my penalty calls here tonight, Justin. I'm I, getting it backwards. I don't every fault time. you, though. It's been tough to tell. Number of calls that could have gone either way. No, I think we had a timeout Broncos. Uh, does anyone want to talk about it here before this first and five comes up? Langley leading 17 to 3. 
And looking good to pick up their fifth win of the season. Still 18 plus minutes of football to play here, but with a win here tonight, Langley moves into a three-way tie for second place. As I kind of want to get you a peek at the upcoming schedule for these teams. To give you an idea, Langley with Vancouver Island and Kamloops left on their schedule. I want to give you an idea of the games next weekend as well. Just two games on the Saturday, Huskers and Rebels, and that's another crucial matchup there. Raiders and Rams next week as well. And it'll be another home game here for Langley, and then they will go to Kamloops to round out the regular season. Here's Little from under center. Five-step draw, pressured, throws, tipped, and incomplete. Looking for Liam Stewart, and again, Little throws it into traffic, and not to be little the Kamloops Broncos here Justin but doing that against a better team say than the Broncos you put that into a more talented secondary is kind of where I'm going some questionable decisions here from Duncan Little those are balls that normally would get picked off probably looking at about four interceptions that the Broncos have just not been able to hang on to so it brings up second and ten three receivers to the high side Eglin Neto they Check it, it's Liam Stewart, the lone man. It's a handoff conservative call there on second and five. And Carter only able to pick up three. We saw that, though, earlier from the se in the season, rather, from Duncan Little in the game that uh, you were in Calgary for, Jay, calling yeah. the Minto Cup. I can't off the top of my head recall who the opponent was on that night that I was out here calling the game, but Little just had interception after interception after interception. Ten turnovers, uh, I believe, in that, in that game. And I want to say it was the Okanagan Sun. I believe you are correct. And is Langley going to go for it here on third and short? It looks like they will. They got a long two to go here on third down. So you got Huskers and Rebels. That's going to be a crucial game for those two. And then on the Sunday to round out week nine, it'll be Broncos and Sun. And you think the Sun would roll in that one to keep their hold on first place. And the final week of the season, I'll get to you momentarily here, is a big third down play coming forward. Langley and Little will throw for it. Looks over the middle, low pass going down for it, incomplete. Says the officials it hit the turf, and Kamloops holds on defense and gets off the field here and will remain down 14. I don't know. You got a pretty good kicker there in Matthias Bueno, Justin Morissette. You're up 14. You line up, you kick a field goal there, you make it a three-score game. I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to drive that nail into the coffin and, and keep the offense out there, keep the clock moving, keep the momentum going. But now you turn the ball over and downs and a chance for Kamloops to get right back in this game. They haven't really shown the ability to get the ball down the field on a consistent basis, but you never know in this league. One big play and... You're in business, but a good tackle on the backfield there by Langley. I think it's confidence in their defense, yeah, though, Jake, no, right? Uh, I, I get that. I get that. I just think in that scenario, why not line it up for a field goal and make it a three-score game and really put yourself in a good position with 15 minutes well, to play? the book probably said don't kick. <laughs> yes. As we come back to that infamous and elusive book. All right, book. week 10 <laughs> should be an interesting one. Rebels and Sun. Rams and Broncos, Huskers and Raiders. That Huskers-Raiders game in Week 10 could be a doozy. And an open man. And a flag back down for roughing the passer as well. And maybe Kamloops' biggest play of the game. Matt White with the reception on our near sideline here. And nobody anywhere near him, really. Plenty of room to come up with that catch. By the way... If you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do so. Each week here in the BCFC, my man, the voice of the Vancouver Island Raiders, Dominic Abassi, breaks it down, does a little YouTube hit, five, six minutes, gives you a recap of the week that was, a look ahead to the week that 
fantastic stuff from Dominic Abassius, a former player in this league, a longtime voice of the Vancouver Island Raiders. Does a fantastic job with that. And make sure you check out Dominic Abassi's weekly recap of the BCFC each week. BCFC underscore media on Twitter if you want to uh, take a look at that. Check out the website as well. They do a weekly musings article, which is always very informative as well. I'm sure if you just look up BCFC on YouTube, those videos will probably come up as well. Mm, yeah, I've heard of the YouTube. I, pretty popular? Yeah, the I, think YouTube? So. I yeah. think so. Okay. Yeah. Brokrinich with a carry as we near the end of the third quarter here. I was talking about feeling like the Rams were comfortable to bet on their defense here. Might not have been a good bet, unfortunately. They've given up. As things have gone sideways for them ever since I said that. Should have just kept my mouth shut. It's all my fault. They've given up a couple of big plays here late in the quarter. This will be the final play, burying a penalty here in quarter three. Man, can it? We'll look to pass over the middle. Completion. Nice job there. Coverage was pretty tight as well, but his hands over the middle. Is that right again? Matt Wright making Matt. the catch. Yeah, Matt White, in fact. Matt White, excuse me. No R in his name, but there is an R in reception, which he's come up with a couple times there. I, feel, I kind of feel like you've been sitting on that one oh. for a while. <laughs> Maybe the last five seconds. End of the third quarter, though. It'll be a 14-point lead with 15 minutes to play here from McLeod Athletic Park. And that's the Broncos team that right now in this game looks pretty loose out there. There is no pressure that is getting to these guys. The fact that they are down 14 in a season where they are still looking for their first win... This game probably still feels within reach for them. But those are all guys enjoying themselves on the field right now. And that's not always the case when you get to this point in the year and have the record that they do. Man, good defense there that time by Langley as they stack it up for a loss. Bring up a second and 12 here, and you know you got a full quarter to play here if you're Cam Loose, but almost three down territory here if I'm Coach Yamoka. Here comes pressure, screen set up, and it's a good call, but pretty good pursuit to the football as well by the Rams. We'll stop them, stop them well short of the first down. We'll bring up third, and about nine to go here in decision time for the Broncos. I don't know what the book says, but I'd go for it personally. Honestly, I think the book is just after touchdowns for whether you go for two or go for one. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's the origin of the book. Sure. I, I think you may be like getting into a, like a different uh, some, series. Some like, kind of tone. Yeah, like the, it's, like, it's not like the Hardy Boys novels, <laughs> right? There's not, there's not more than one. Deep ball into the end zone here. Chance for it. Picked off. That is a huge interception there for Langley. Colton DeJong in the end zone picks off that ball, and Langley will get it back as Kamloops oh so close, but come up empty on the interception. How about the adjustment to the football? I don't want to say that that's the ball game right there, Jake, but you have to think if the Rams were going to let this one slip away, it was going to be a Broncos touchdown right there that was going to pull them right back in it and give them all kinds of time left in the fourth quarter to maybe get another one in the next 13-20. Right now, however, you have to think any chance that Kamloops had of coming back in this one just diminished very greatly. And a drive here by Langley would serve them well to... Get some field position back, take some time off the clock as well. They'll hand off to Carter, who's been the man here in the second half. And a good, powerful run on first down, picks up close to 13. He is feeling it here in the second half. Joe Carter has been spectacular. 
And I think we've got an injury down on the field as well. And we do indeed. Is it Carter that is the downed ram? <laughs> Tough to tell from here. But it will move the sticks that play on that gain of 13. attend to the injured ram. We will take a quick break here on BCFC TV powered by Treeland Remax and be back when play resumes. Rams lead at 17 to 3 with 12.42 to go third quarter. Fourth quarter. See you in a minute. Football fans, essentially an injured Bronco on the play, and it might have been a collision with Joe Carter, who had a head of steam. I'm trying to pick up the number down there. I believe it's 34 for the Broncos. Haver Kemp, but it is a first down for Langley, and kind of holding his shoulder area there was Haver Kemp, and I think his evening probably over. I thought it was a Bronco, just given the way that all the trainers who were running onto the field were coming from their sideline, but. We didn't see the orange socks. Agnetto makes an adjustment to the football and brings in another catch for a first down. And first down, Joe. Let's, you know, let's move in the sticks and moving the clock as well. As Langley out to the 42-yard line now after that catch from Nick Aglinetto. And you mentioned it at the beginning of the drive, Jake, but... Being able to run some time off the clock right now just as important to the Rams as the possibility of putting up more points at the moment. I tell you what, first down, Joe, I think I've been, this is my year six here. you got a pretty fine beard, just, but Joe Carter down there who lets you know a PA now, I think he's been growing that thing for about, man, is it impressive down there, that beard on uh, Mr. Joe Carter. Here's Little to throw. Guns one. Max Joseph goes up and brings it in. There have been some spectacular catches in this game today, Jake. My goodness, what a rifle from L Duncan Little, but Max Joseph jumping, spinning in the air to secure that ball. And comes down with it with control. And it's just like that last grab from Liam Stewart, the air that he had to get to come up with that one. A leaping effort. Took it right in the body and hung on to it. All, all the way down to the Bronco 43-yard line now with 11 minutes to play and the clock running. And it's plays like that that really make you appreciate the arm of Duncan Little as well. He, he's got a gun on him. No question about it. And he'll throw again here on first down. He's got to open Joe Carter Jr. He'll turn the corner at the 40 and cut down there nicely. Open field tackle from Andrew Berrig. Out on the edge there. If he doesn't make that wrap up, Carter still may be running. Gain of three, so second and seven. And good on Carter for coming up with that one. It looked as though the defender may have gotten a finger on it. Carter has very good hands out of the backfield here for the Rams. And he can give you a little sugar. He can give you a little spice as well out of the backfield when he runs that ball too. But very effective football player because he can block he can run hard he can run with some finesse and then he can catch the ball into the backfield as well and that makes him very hard to defend uh, as often as we compliment max joseph and his running ability it's other guys in the backfield like carter who are open up space mm -hmm. to make it happen for him lots of time for little who gets finally swallowed up but does get back to the line of scrimmage and finally really been 
spoiled in their backfield over the years. You think back to Ryan McDonald, who I mentioned he used to wear that number two. Nathan Lund comes to mind. I always wanted to see John Beckerleg come out uh, and play some tailback. He was predominantly a kick returner and a defensive back, but they've had some real good athletes come out of the backfield here over the years for the Langley Rams, and they got another couple of good ones here in Joe Carter and Maximilian Joseph, who have moved to that tailback spot from the wide receiver position. He's in the slot right here as they empty the backfield for Little to roll out on the run. Fires Aglinetto, catch first down Langley, and man, oh man, just, they're just marching this ball down the field right now, executing at every play call that's made here from Howie, and where was this in the first half? Like, they're just, everything they're doing is right. They're getting the blocking, they're getting the, the proper passes, they're getting the proper pass routes, and first down, first down, first down, and just methodically marching down the field here inside the 30-yard line. That's a pretty daring call, though, to go for it on third down when you needed eight yards for the first, and they did get it, so you have to tip your hat to them. But oh. uh, I don't know that I would have done that. First and ten now. Yeah, look for a handoff coming, but no, they'll throw on first down. It's a quick one. Liam Stewart tries to turn up field, and dangling that ball out there, but picks up a close to another first down on a second effort. Give him nine... As they look at the sticks, and they'll say second down. Very, very close to the first, though. We'll take another look at it here. Okay. Stewart gathers it in, is able to stay on his feet. That's why you do those squats in the weight room right there, Justin Morris. That using that leg power, stay on his feet and drive forward for a couple extra yards. His knees were down just before he could do that barrel roll move to try and pick up the extra yardage for the first. Second, second. and one. Let's see if Little just goes with the keeper here. Doesn't go with the quick count. Usually if he's going to sneak it, he does. He'll play action. Looks into the end zone. Touchdown, Langley. What a play call from Howie Zeron. And what a delivery from Duncan Little. And it's Liam Stewart with another major. And another bullet from Duncan Little. He is just Chuckin throwing darts. them. The arm is on fire here in the second half. Offense took a while to get going, but it looks like the Rams are rolling right now, and they add some extra separation on the scoreboard. It's a 20-point game, and it might be more than that in just a moment. Aglanetto to hold. Sheelan for the extra point. Up and through it goes. And Langley extends the lead now to 21. Don't forget, folks, this football game once was 3-2 just minutes before halftime. Uh, since then, Langley has pulled away here from the Broncos. They now lead 24-3. 22 unanswered points. And Jake, I was just singing the praises of the throwing arm of Duncan Little. You've got to tip the cap as well to the performance that Liam Stewart is putting on here today. Really His stepped out. second touchdown of the game. And my goodness, if you were to take your pick of the receiving options, at Duncan Little's disposal, in the absence of Javon Katoy. You know, we were, we were thinking about Max Joseph as probably being the guy who was going to be the lead offensive gun for the Rams in this game. Instead, I don't think there's any question. It's been Liam Stewart time and time again. Uh, Joe Carter has been right there. I mean, maybe it's Duncan Little distributing the football around the football field here that has been the most impressive. The leg on Sheila as he drives it all the way down to the 12-yard line. And Langley downfield, but busting through a seam there. Good return as Andrew Barrett gets out close to the 38-yard line. We'll see where they spot it down here. Looks like the 39. So good return there from the 12. Gets it to the 39, and decent field position to start this drive. Here for Kamloops, now trailing by three converted touchdowns. And of course, we just marveled at the drive that the Rams were able to put together. It kind of makes you forget about the fact that before that, the Broncos yeah. were knocking on the door. They almost had a touchdown of their own yeah. moments before. Yeah, before being picked off in the end zone. They'll hand off up the middle this time. And gang tackled after about a four-yard, maybe five-yard game. So save for the interception at the end. That was one of Kamloops' better drives of the game. We'll see if they can 
string some of that momentum together here, but of course that first down didn't quite go the way they would hope. Clock running here down to 6.45, and Kenlos needs a little more urgency in their offensive huddle right now, taking a little bit too much time in between plays, down 21 points for my liking anyway. Mankinet looks to throw. He's got lots of time. And now he's running out of time. Avoids one tackler and then delivers the football right at the 55-yard line. Nice throw and catch there as Sopia makes his second catch of the game. Steps out of bounds for a Bronco first down. And for all the scrambling in the backfield, the, yeah. the pressure that he was facing there, when the pass finally did come, it was about as calm as it gets. It was nice composure there for Vanconet. He'll throw again here and delivers a strike for a seven-yard gain. And maybe a quick whistle there from the official. As they said, forward progress had been stopped. And maybe Langley let up at the whistle there, but... Thies Dineveld comes up with the right. reception once again. He was not down. But another good game on first down. Brings up a second and four. Five receivers in. Here's the handoff. Right at the sticks. Depends on the spot. I think it'll be good enough for a Bronco first down. Just. It's right on the border, if not. Approach stretch drive here. Are we going to get our first measurement of the evening? I think we will. And I think they will bring in the chains here for the first time tonight. What do you say, Justin? Eagle eyes. I say first down. I'm going to say no. If only to be the contrarian. Thank You're you right, much. though. Thank you very much. It's not fair. You have glasses. It's my Al McGuire <laughs> eagle eyes there. I'm throwing out all these old references tonight. People are probably <laughs> just like Edwin Moses, Al McGuire. The A-team is how we started the night. People are going to be like, how old is this dude calling this football game right now? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, it's been a long day. It's pull on the 43-yard line. Here's a handoff, and the Rams ready for that. Look, I don't know why he's reaching that football out for extra yardage. We're near the first down, and it's just asking to be swatted loose, but I'm stacking up pretty quickly on Trent Price. Again, watching this, I guess Langley's probably in a bit of a prevent defense, allowing... Short yardage gains to be had as long as the clock keeps moving and the ball stays in front of them. But scoreline, I mean, Broncos are moving the football here pretty well in this second half. And you got to think they're in a situation now where they're going to keep going for it on third down oh, every absolutely. single time. Yes, they will. Second and nine. That looked offside. No flag. It certainly here, did. Here comes pressure. And rolling all the way. Look at the speed. Oh, the big man there. Way coming right after the quarterback and just couldn't quite catch up as the ball thrown incomplete. Now bring up third down. Fankinette finally realized uh, I'm running out of room to run here and I don't really have any receiving options in front of me. Just as you said, Justin Morris said they bring out the punt team. That is that's a little surprising. Stunning. I mean, I guess you are down 21 with four to play, but uh, I mean, wh why kick here? You're inside Ram territory. You haven't won a game all season. You got a third and nine. Even if you run the ball right now, yeah. you <laughs> might turn it over on downs and Big give, deal. give Langley the ball at the 34-yard line. Big deal. Look at this exactly. kick here from Couture. Down to the 10, Joseph near sideline. And we'll just step out of bounds here. Why not at least try to play to win at this point, right? Like, Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that punt whatsoever. But 
They basically just called the game on themselves. That's probably why I'm a Measley broadcaster and Coach Yamoka is I don't a, head know. Coach, a head coach of a football team. I don't, I don't know. I think if you review the game tape from this broadcast, you will find that Jake Elliott correctly <laughs> called a, 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 a number of plays, not just the fake punt, but uh, that would be the most impressive of all of your, uh, <laughs> your masterful play call predictions this yeah, evening. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's you're playing armchair quarterback up here, obviously. I'd, f I'd find it really intriguing, just, you know, not to be, just to get down there one time as a as a head coach and just call plays for an entire football game and just see, just see how, you know, I think it'd be really interesting, fascinating, to do. The Costa, I believe, on the carry. You are correct. He gets a touch here late in this game. Devin DaCosta into the backfield and for it, Langley. You know, obviously it probably seems a whole lot easier up here. You're looking down on the field. You can see what the defense is doing. You know, you know, time. When you're down on that field, the clock's ticking. Everything's in real time, full speed. It probably changes your mindset on, you know, who's available for you, who's fresh, and what, you know, where you are, down distance, all the rest of it. It's it's no easy chore being a, a play caller in the in the game of football. Little to throw. Oh, and that one a flat drop. James Spencer, the intended receiver, and he again be, got his hands on it. A couple drops for Spencer tonight, and might be Spencer's first action here this season for the Rams in the absence of Javon Gatoy and. Give the nerves. Get in. That was actually Yancey back in there at quarterback. And that was actually a well-thrown football. And one, Spencer's got a catch. And he knows it. He doesn't need us to tell him that. He knows it himself. And it's going to be frustrating. And you get targeted a couple of times and just can't come up with the catch. It's a number of backups on the field right now for Langley. And why not? You know, you're up 21. We're inside the final three minutes. May as well give these guys some game time. See what they can do. And it's just nice as well to get them into a game and kind of, you know, reward them for being good soldiers on a long season like this. I think I've mentioned a couple of times that that Sun Raiders game took place in the Apple Bowl. I believe that game actually took place at Caledonia Park today, so my apologies for that. Raiders will hit the road next week and come here to McLeod Athletic Park. That's a loose football, and it's Rams football off the muff punt. <laughs> That's a celebration right there from Dominic Zenti. Little excited about that fumble recovery. Good on him. But yes, Vancouver Island will make the trip across the water and take on the Rams next week. Here from McLeod. First time this season, I think we've actually had back to back weeks of think, home games. Yeah, I think that's true. And it'll be the final home game of the regular season for Langley. And. Then the question will become, will they get the home playoff game? I don't think they're going to catch Okanagan for first place, but they could very well secure that second place seeding and get the home playoff date in the opening round. Long throw, little, just off the mark. Langley staying aggressive. That was actually Sean Lau. Oh, excuse me. I don't we're know getting why the, the third string quarterback in here. No, I know it looked like Duncan Little. He's tall. He's got the white... Uh, under arms as well, but... Uh, Langley staying aggressive offensively as well. Throwing the ball here late in the game, up 21. And we'll bring up a second and 10. So it's 19, Sean Lau. Big body in there at quarterback right now. Look at the size of this guy. He is massive. Final two and a half minutes. I don't have the stats on him. He's got to be, what, Justin, 6'5", about 230. He looks much taller than anybody around him out there. And Throws up a deep ball, and it cool. falls incomplete. Probably no. should have been picked off. It was nearly picked off, but you still have to look at a throw like that and think that Sean Lau has. Yeah, he a, he's got an arm on him. He threw it off his back foot like it was nothing. That one went about 40 yards in the air on a rope. Cross field. Good distance on it. But Third down. Langley will have to kick away. Yeah. 
And we'll see once the Broncos take possession here if they get into a third down situation again, if they're going to kick it away again. Mm. You'd think if they did earlier, that is going to be their plan throughout the rest of this one. But. Good punt from Bueno this time. And again, have been really impressed with the special team's effort here from Langley tonight. There is a flag down at the 37 and the 26 and the 50. Sam Schlitz looking real shaken up after that there one. There is a penalty flag literally in every zone of the field here. He was getting back to his feet looking real spun around. One on the near sideline here as well at the 25. And Schlitz just comes straight off the field, sits on the bench, takes the helmet off. So note the start time next week, folks. Next Saturday, Huskers and Rebels from West Hill. That's a 3 o'clock Pacific time kickoff here from McLeod Athletic Park. Rams and Raiders at 4 o'clock. And on Sunday, Sun and Rams will go at 1 p.m. Broncos and Sun at 1 o'clock on Sunday, October the 7th. That is your Week 9 matchups next week. What do we got? Rekit? Or a pen? Man, what are they doing here? Ball will come all the way into Ram territory at the 48-yard line. And like you said, there were four, at least four flags on that play. Take your pick. I think the Ram offense back out onto the field. I don't know what just happened there, but it must have been. Did they rough the kicker? It must have been. Must have been. Sean Lyle still in there, quarterback here for Langley. And he will hand off. Another flag comes flying. Good speed right up the gut. Devin DaCosta is happy to be in the football game and showing well here for his coaches, saying, give me some more playing time, coach. Look what I can do. Looking like Max Joseph out there, given the just size the burst of him. Just right just there as he just stuck it in another gear to DaCosta and took two, three Broncos to take him down. But it could be all for not here, depending on the flag. Yeah, I think they're just going to pick the flag up. Yeah, flag negated. I always wondered about that in football. Like, you see that a lot. They throw the flag and then they, well, actually, there's no flag. I changed my mind. Yeah, I don't, never really got that. I get it, like, I'm if not, it falls I, out of your pocket or something, but if you threw it, you obviously threw it for a reason. I think it's admirable. I wish that there were more uh, penalties that got walked back in, say, hockey, for example. Yeah, well, just don't, don't call it. Penalty. Yeah, exactly. Wow, on a counter, DaCosta. And not much on that carry, but we'll keep the clock moving. I'd like to see Sean Lyle try and run the ball on a QB sneak, <laughs> see what he can do with that frame. Or just line him up a tailback and let him go. It'll be a second and about eight. Lyle will go under center. And the reserve, J.J. Jackson back in the game here for Langley. And Lyle the throw. The big man trying to scramble. He's, look out, goes down. And clearly, the scrambling, not probably his strongest suit for the big quarterback there. He's taken down in the backfield, and that'll bring up a punting situation here for Langley. you got to be impressed, though, by it. Hey, How many me. men it took to took, take him down there? Uh, I got all the respect in the world for the big boys. You better believe it. He had two guys wrapping up his legs, another guy at his waist before he was finally taken down. Another chance at another punt here for Matthias Bueno with just over a minute to go here in this one. Ramps are going to move to five and three. Look out, high snap brought down. Bueno's going to run it. He's got some room out here. Now he's going to cut it back inside like he probably should have done the first time, but he will come up short. But a flag comes in at the end of the play. Man, man, has there ever been a lot of laundry here in this second half. I mean, there were, what, four guys who all tried to jump on Bueno there? Which reminds me, I got some laundry to do when I get home tonight, Justin. <laughs> Gonna hang up those delicates. And the 
referees will confer. Coach Yamoka doesn't seem too happy on the Kamloops sideline. Is Langley offense going to stay on the field here for a late hit on the kicker on the second fake punt of the game? Really where this game, I feel like it almost turned just as that start of the second half where Langley went for the onside kick. Although they, they went backwards a bunch on a bunch of penalties after recovering that onside kick, but it really kind of it set the tone for the second half. Like, hey, Absolutely. we're coming out here to win. And we're, we're, gonna, we're here to play. Yeah. So... You know, sometimes you don't need to score on, on those type of plays, but it just planted the seed, I think, in the Broncos' psyche that, hey, we're, Langley's coming out here in the second half, and they're coming out firing on all cylinders. I mean, it's reflected in even the way Duncan Little has thrown the ball in the second half. This is a Langley offense, and a defense for that matter, who have come out here after a, a pretty... I don't want to say uneventful, but it wasn't the most exciting first half of football. And said, we're going to play our game here, and whether you like it or not, we're going to just punch it right down your throat. And that's yeah. exactly what they did on that Joe, onside kick. Joe Carter really uh, kind of spearheaded that mantra as well. And Langley does retain the football here, and it's down to the 27 of the Broncos with 50 seconds to play and look for Langley to keep it on the ground here. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly what the penalty was, but I think just because he held on to it and tried to run it up, when they tackled him, they were all uh, roughing the kicker there. Pitch play to Costa, trying to get the corner. And guess what, Justin Morissette? Another flag comes flying. That's, that's my third game of the day, Jake, and it's just been flags all over the you're, place. You're ready to go home. I'm, I'm at my wit's end. It's been a great day of football. This game certainly, uh, as we said, broke wide open in the second half. And it's had plenty for the folks here at McLeod to feel happy about as they head back to their homes well, in about 41 this seconds will be time. the fourth win in a row here for Langley. And again, I go back to those opening games of the season, that penalty-filled game against West Shore. They let get away from them at halftime. They had a big lead over VI over at Caledonia Park. They let get away. You know, that turnover fest against Okanaga, I think you could hand them a loss there. But really, this, this team here in Langley could easily be 7-1. and one. Contending for first, if not squarely in it yeah and now just have vancouver island and another date with the broncos left on their schedule here in the regular season and with the other team's schedules lining up langley looking good to make the playoffs for sure just a matter of where they're going to slot in in the seedings i mean that vancouver island game next week might be a good look at your bc final in the end could very well be Mind you, Okanagan will have something to say about that, I'm sure. Absolutely. Wall will take a knee for the final time here tonight. And handshakes to come after one more snap. But yeah, I, at this point, I think that's probably a pretty fair assessment. Mind you, Valley with another win tonight. They're at the five-win mark, but Okanagan, Vancouver Island, Langley, Valley, all with a chance at it here this year. Clock hits triple zeros, and it's a final from McLeod Athletic Park. It was tight for a while in that opening half, but Langley pulls away in the end and win this one by 21. 24 to 3 is your final. 22 unanswered points for the Rams. Starting at about probably the 50-second mark, uh, or 50 seconds left, rather, in the half. Safe travels to the Broncos, back up to Coquihalla, back to Kamloops, and we will bid you adieu here tonight from McLeod Athletic Park for Langley Rams football here on BCFC-TV, powered by Treeland Remax. Thanks for joining us for our entire production crew here at 10 Feet Sports and Entertainment. For statisticians, for Justin Morissette, I've been Jake Elliott, and for the pigskin and the gridiron, we'll talk to you next week. Here from McLeod Athletic Park, 4 p.m. kickoff against the Raiders right here on BCFC-TV. We'll talk to you then. Good night, everybody.